All right, guys, welcome back to the Mikey Betts Show with DeFrisco and Company, sponsored by Bet Online. Make sure you guys use promo code Mikey Betts. You guys will get a match, to, match bonus on your first deposit. So you put in a thousand, you get 500. You put in 500, you get 250. You put in a hundred, you get 50. You know how it works. So promo code Mikey Betts. That's up. Yep. In the meantime, I'd like to uh, welcome two great guests. We have White Boy Rick. Everybody knows White Boy Rick. Rick Who does it? Thanks for having me on, Mike. Scott, we'll do a little cheers in a second. A and then we also have the old co-host for Dallas Cowboy Purposes uh, and friend of the pod, of course, Elliot. What's up, Elliot? What's up, guys? How you doing? Thanks Cannot for not complain. Me. Let's uh, start off with the shot. We usually don't start off this way, but uh, you, you got Rick on. You have to. Oh, cheers me. No, cheers, cheers me. Go up, bro. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Cheers, everyone, man. Oh. I think I just took a shot like a bitch on live camera. It's like Christmas. We call it Mikey Pete. I think I was the only one to chase. So yeah, I might be the bitch here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah, yeah. Chase. All right. So we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, it's a big week in Chicago. We are all Chicago guys, um, except this guy. He's a he's an Indiana guy. You, you want to talk about it? Can we, can yeah, we break that down? Do, do, does that's that need to be addressed? Yeah, well, like being an Indiana person. So yeah, let's talk. About uh, I'm a Chicago guy through and through. I bleed uh, Bears and Bulls till I die, but I am also a proud Indiana Hoosier. I attended Indiana University, so if that's a crime, then lock me up. Okay, so you attended Indiana. You are a Hoosier. Uh, you also run the Barstool Indiana pod for the yep. social media, right? Uh, I don't run any podcasts. I just do social on behalf of Indy, so I do Pacers, Colts, all the Indiana schools, that kind of thing. Okay. So first question I have to ask is what is your favorite one to do out of those? Out of the sport? Uh, as far as sport, I'm a fan of. I'm a basketball guy through and through. Uh, but it, it's been a lot more fun for the Colts this year. They've just been kind of a more interesting team. Uh, Ellinger just got the starting game yeah. out of nowhere. That That's was nuts. just an electric factory. We're going to see how that goes. Uh, but the Colts are just moving the needle more than the Pacers right now. But it's been a great gig. What's so the last time the Pacers moved the needle? Danny Granger? The Pacers have always been. They pushed, the LeBron, LeBron, they pushed LeBron to six games, in the, the seven games in the yeah. first round. Danny that Danny last Oladipo. Oladipo, Oladipo, yeah. Oladipo oh, fellow yeah. IU graduate. Who was, that, who was their center that they had to? Um, Roy Hibbert. Roy Hibbert, yeah. Oh, he was great. He, he was also on Parks and Recreation for an episode. He was. Sure. Yeah. Yes. That. Yes. Big, so, big guy. So does being a uh, – is running the Indiana page and stuff, like you clearly follow Indiana sports, but that – that doesn't make you a Colts fan more than no, Colts absolutely fans. not. I it's it's a lot of fun to do, it it's is. a lot of fun running the social and yeah. you know, figuring out that's kind of you know, I'm still young, figuring out that's kind of what I want to do for a living, and it's kind of just padding the resume right now and getting the experience. But I mean, the Bears determine my mental health for the next week. Okay. Like, the Bears won on Sunday, I'm in a great mood for the rest of the week. The Colts, they're okay to watch, but they're never gonna beat my team. Okay, so it's kind of like an adopted. Like, yeah, I don't really want to say this. So we all got to clock in. We all got to clock in and do our jobs. Yeah, in time to time. yeah. We all got to switch on a work mode. Two year old girl who just graduated want to go to Europe for a month to figure out who you are. Yeah, yeah. So, essentially, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good summary. Yeah. So I just want to find myself. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How? What made you want to get into all of this? Like, what made you get into the sports world? And what made you want to get into barstool and uh, all that stuff? So I started this white boy Rick account. Uh, it was summer last year. I was just living in Bloomington for the summer, Bloomington, okay. Indiana. And, Bloomington. Yeah. And this was like, I went to college during COVID. So the reason I stayed for the summer was all the bars in the city were finally open. I was finally getting, you know, the bar scene was popping for the first time. I turned 21 when everything was on lockdown. Yeah. So I was like, I'll stick around for the summer. And I got a job just busting tables. Okay. That started at four o'clock. So every day I had pretty much nothing to do. I just started up a Twitter account, pretty much to tweet at Barstool people, just tweet about sports, you know, as every guy in the 20s does. Tweet about Barstool and tweet about sports. Okay. Uh, just started firing those off. To my surprise, as much as anyone, I started getting like followers, started realizing like people were finding it funny, the yeah. shit I had to say. And that's literally not until my senior year of college. I was like, maybe social media is something I could do for a living. And I got this bar still gig. I'm patting my resume with that. And yeah, just started the burner as a goat and or as a joke. I mean, and now I'm just seeing as it's but something it I can do. So yeah, it is a goat. It is yeah, a goat. I am a goat. Literally, I am him when you boil it down. Yes, 100%. Now, 
Um, how, how did you get your foot into the door with that? Like, who's not who's the guy that you met? Or you just apply and everything? I uh, literally just like kept tweeting, kept making like memes for the podcast and clips. Actually, uh, like the first month, you guys, Frank the Tank guy, all yeah, Frank yeah. the Tank guys. Shout out Frank, shout out Frank. Like, which I have, I have a clip of Frank that I have to show on the podcast, which is an all time clip. I'll show it, I'll show it during the show. There it is. Insane. Is that it? Yeah, sorry. Okay. 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 <laughs> sorry. So, like, I spent like all, I spent all day making this like Frank the Tank edit, like, video. And it was like an ESPN 30 for 30. So, like, what if I told you? And like just doing Frank the Tank over all of it. Spent all day on it. I'm like, this is a banger. DM'd it Frank straight to Frank. All I got back just LOL. Oh, perfect. That's <laughs> all you need. It's quintessential Frank. But the tank. that's LOL. that's an LOL. Yeah. yeah. No, Frank's yeah. And it felt hurt. It felt yeah. hurt. He just yeah. got he does an LOL and not LOL. Right. And when right. I said LOL, that's all I probably went, hmm. It felt like the first earnest LOL in history. Yeah. Like right. the first person to actually mean that they yeah. laughed out loud. Yeah. But no, I just kept like, I have a few Barstool guys that followed me on Twitter and kept like interacting with the content, interacting with those guys. And then a few months ago, just got a DM like, do you have any interest in taking over the indie stuff part time? And I was like, absolutely. absolutely. Anything yeah. to get my foot in the door at that company. So I've been doing that for the last few months and it's been a blast. Who's, your, who's your Barstool go other than you, obviously? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm a big, big cat guy. I yeah, think everyone is just because he's a Chicago guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's just the greatest to ever do it yeah. in all aspects. Uh, pretty much anyone that's on the yak. KB, Nick, okay. all those guys. So you're a big yak guy. Oh, huge. Little, 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 little Sasquatch doesn't miss. I not once. Not once. Sass, Sass is the man. Now, are you guys a fan of Tank Thursdays then or no? Because Tank Thursdays have taken a hiatus. I haven't seen Frank. Oh, on the yak? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm a fan of anything Tank so What? What is him talking about? He doesn't. He hasn't won socks in five years. We told us that live on the pod, and we're like, dude, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean like that you don't wear true. socks? He's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm not a sock so, but, guy. But does socks he, does he own thing. socks? No, he's done. He does not own socks. Not anymore. a sock guy confirmed. So this is what the thing is. I just don't get, I don't, I don't get it. If he, go, if he, is he coming to your wedding? This is what I wanted to bring up. Okay. So he's not because he has an event in Philly with the guys. So I told Frank, I was, uh, that's why we're going to the, uh, the Bears game the week before. Right. So we'll talk about that yeah. later. Yeah. Interrupt real quick. Did my invite to this wedding get lost in the mail? Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, it kind of did. Okay. So I, I okay. actually, I did. You changed the address. Kitchen, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's going, it was on the way to Indiana. So. Yeah. Okay. So that is your fault. So I invited Frank. I told Frank, and um, uh, he was like, Yeah, I can't go, blah, 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 because they have uh, a bar school event. I said, All right. Understandable. But I really wanted him to go for the main reason to see if he would wear socks or not to my wedding. Because that would be insane. If Frank didn't wear socks at my wedding, I mean, it's not like, oh, my gosh. But I'd be like, dude, that's what, I, up, Frank, what are you doing? I, my, my invitation's on my fridge, so but I don't remember okay. that. Sorry. I'm but is, is, it, is it black tie or black tie optional? I think, it's, I think it's black tie off. Okay. I think it's black tie off. Okay, which means you, should, you wear a suit. Yeah, she'll just ask it. Frank to wear some socks for that day for what a present. In, in, in support. That's his wedding yeah. present is he, yes. he gives me he uh he wears he socks, socks on. and then like gives them to me when he's done. I just did a nasty uh uh wing burp right now. So if anybody smells that, I apologize. I know it's, last, it's time, burps last, last time, time it was a shrimp breath, and that was fucking disgusting. Hey, you're a gross piece of shit. Anyways, so uh yeah, Frank doesn't wear socks. I just have to ask, how does that conversation with your fiance go where she's like Oh, it's like a hundred bucks a plate. And you're like, well, you need to find out if he's wearing socks. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was. There's, is he's that worth the price of admission? She would be fine with Frank going with no socks or going with socks. Okay. I just, I feel like, no, actually, I don't think she would be okay. I don't think Frank she would be okay. So there wasn't a conversation. Yeah, no, there okay. wasn't a conversation. So Frank came and like, Wearing like a Mets hat and like his Mets jacket. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he came and he just came in like his Mets gear. Yeah, like, all right. With, yeah. His, with his phone out of his waist. You're he doing your first dance and, like, and you just hear motherfucking <laughs> Buster <laughs> Olney. <Yeah. laughs> the goddamn Mets are losing again. No, they this got now. This is now a Frank Tank podcast. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, shout out Frank. Shout, shout out shout Frank. Frank. Um. All right, let's transition to a little bit. We got to know a little bit about White Boy Rick. Uh, how we got started with bar school. Uh, what made him want to become a social media icon? I mean, when you think of Chicago, brother, you said it, not me. When you think of Chicago, you think of two things. No, three things. Four things. No, four things. Four All right. Things. You think of uh, uh, Malord. Shout out Elliot. You think of. Uh, he loves Malord. 
This guy invented Voldemort. It's, it's disgusting. All right. So you okay, think of Voldemort? Obviously. You, you, think, you think of the Bears? Yeah. No. You think of Go White on. Boy Rick? Yeah. And you think of Mikey Betts? That's what you oh. think. Yeah, that's what you think of. You think of all four of them. Wow. You think of uh, and the bean, bean, really? The bean. And the bean. Yeah. The bean. yeah. Bean. Speaking of the bean, bean just yeah. beat Bean's town. So New England just got fucking rocked. Boston just got fucking rocked. The Bears are back. The Bears are amazing. The Bears are the best team in the NFL. I gotta they be might honest. be Super Bowl contenders. I got to be honest. Uh-huh. The Bears are the best team in the NFL. Yeah. And you know who said it? Who? Me. Yeah, you did say last that last week, week. I said, you were talking about how the Bears are going to lose. And I, and I said to you, I said, hey, the whole time you were talking, I was just thinking about how the Bears are going to win this game. And you know what they fucking did? But what did I do? You left out the part where I said Bears twenty. Left. And then, and then we, and then I flip flopped you. Yeah, I flip flopped you. And then we said Bears twenty. We said Bears twenty. So Bears are the greatest team in the NFL right now. Let's they talk about why. Embarrassed one of the greatest franchises in any sports. Yeah, I would say yes, yes. Embarrassed them. We're looking at something that kind of looks like uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, where he's, <laughs> yeah. you know he's just pointing at the map. Pepe Sylvia. Pepe Sylvia. All right, so what do you guys think about the Bears? First of all, this is Elliot. Elliot, for the uh, for the new listeners, not for the OGs. Elliot is a diehard Cowboys fan. But also, I would say just a diehard football fan in general. So but I, I, I hit up Mikey because I was at the Thursday night game against Washington. And I got some things to say about Bears fans in general. Because I agree with you guys. I agree with you guys. I had the Patriots money, or I'm sorry, I had the Bears money line against the Patriots. Uh-oh, I and I'm also in a huge survivor pool. So many people lost. Okay. Because the fucking Patriots lost to the Bears. Dude, Bears fans, you just got to get it together. You have a great team. No. A great young team. Yep. Oh, dude. Uh-huh. Take it easy back there. Take okay. it easy back right, there. I'll take it easy. For Wait, well, you, we just said that. They're the greatest oh, team. You, you, you were just talking about it. You were just talking about it. I got you. really bad. Dude, yeah, I'm just a football fan team. in general. Dude, Justin Fields, great quarterback, no wide receivers, like you just said. Okay. No offensive line. Dude's just getting killed back there. Dude, Sweet. they still have potential. Great, great players on defense, D line. Backfield is young, but dude, you, you gotta give us some time. Stinks. And you know what? But we did just get rid of the stinkiest part. We just got rid of Robert Quinn. That is honestly. It is the best move a Chicago sports team has made in a while, in my opinion. He stinks. He is yeah. – uh, my phone's over there, and I have it on there. But he is – there's only three worst people uh, in uh, – what is it, FPP or uh, – PFF. Yeah, PFF, something, like that. something yeah. like that. He's the – there's only three people ranked worse than him in the NFL this year at his position. He stinks. He has one sack and six tackles. He has six tackles in the whole season. Well, my thing is, is the contract. The contract and the contract is horrible. He's yeah. 34 years old. He, they, sh- they got a fourth-round pick for him. I would have been happy with the sixth-round pick. There's so, a reason the Cowboys got rid of him. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There is a reason the Cowboys got rid of him, and we realized it too late. And Well, he had a good year. He had a good year. He had – all right. He might be mailing it in this year. All right. To say it yeah, was well, a we mistake tra- him up. We should have traded him – Last, last year, I agree. Last year. I agree. We probably could have gotten a third for him, but to say probably, yeah. it was a mistake of a signing, I think. No, no, it was not a mistake. Okay, of signing. I think it was a time off because he did have a year. He was the only consistent pass rush. Hundred percent. He was a terrible signing for five years for that amount of money. I think okay, the contract was terrible. I think the contract was terrible. I think the signing of him was good, but just not for the money. Now we did 100%. say he was going to flip a coin. Uh, that's how we decided the team. That's the, 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 the second I heard him say. I flipped a coin to see if I would play for the Bears or the Falcons to sign that contract is when I knew I was like, fuck, this guy does not give a fuck at all. Did you see Roquan Smith? He cried. Yeah, it's he hilarious. did cry. I, I, I hey, guess that. what, buddy? You're next. Oh, <laughs> see you later. He you can go be. with him. He better not. Be. You don't think so? Oh, yeah, I think he's worth the money. Dude. Either way, if the Bears let go of Roquan, that's on them. They're not letting go. Yeah. No, that's on them. That's, that's on them. They let Roquan go. Well, I, I gotta say, I did go. I, I gotta find the video. I I said on Twitter, if the Bears trade, this is already a year ago. If the Bears traded Roquan Smith, I would yeah. I would cuff myself to Hell's that. Hall until they fired that regime. So, so well, you, you might be making a multi-year commitment here. 
I might, I might be. We'll see. That regime's gone, though. So is that, that, well, exactly. that, that, that ties that that his issue. issue because the new regime has at least a couple years. Dude, he's committed himself to whatever regime is present when yes. he's gone. Yes. Is that true? Is it does roll over to the next? Yes, yes, yes. No, if he's 33 and gets traded, guess what? I will be 30 something and, you know, getting, getting locked up. Because I want the regime to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's crazy. That's yeah, yeah. So I was totally with that. With the, with the uh, Robert Quinn trade, I just wanted to bring this up. Shout out to BN underscore Bears, Bears, uh, Bleacher Nation Bears. He said, or the tweet said, doing some fast and quick math, playing around at over the cap with the Bears salary cap calculator. Trading Robert Quinn boosts the Bears from being $115,976. Oh, come on. Come on, you do you can't, it. You can't read. $115 trading, <laughs> trading Robert Quinn boosts the Bears from being $115,976,523 under the cap in 2023 to being $134 million. And more numbers. Under the cap more next year. Numbers. So they gained $20 million for next year. Yeah. By trading this guy. By trading this guy. Huge. And he stinks. And we got a fourth rounder. Out. And he got a fourth rounder. And look at our fourth round this year. Brisker. Who was our fourth round? Uh, Beelis. Uh, Beelis. Oh, Beelis. 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 Who right. I still Fantastic. have hopes for. He's had a bad year so far, but I still have But, dude, what I like about this league, or what about this regime, is no, they let... Yeah, it's got to be. No, I got to be. They let the rookies play. Dude, I... Love, love our rookies. Love. Can we can we get into some Patriots recap before we keep talking? Yeah, um, you're right. You're I right. Like we skipped over the game a little bit. You're right. I got some notes on the Let's game. talk about the game. All right, I'm not trying drop to, the facts. Drop the facts. Okay. Spit. So this is the most hopeful I'm feeling after a Bears win since probably 2018. I was gonna and, say, uh, when was the last? What was Mike? The- Mike, you touched on this earlier. It mm-hmm. wasn't. It wasn't like a fluky win. It wasn't like the quarterback threw a bad pick six or like they muffed the punt. Like shit. We went in there all three phases of the game. We beat the shit out of them. Beat the shit out Not of them. only did we beat the shit out of them, we out coached them. Yeah, hundred percent. How That's like nuts. how many since twenty eighteen? Nagy was again twenty eighteen. Since then, how many times did we win a game just straight up out coaching the other side? Yeah. Are you talking about that Rams game? I feel yeah, like the was, last game that I had the most likes. So I'm just saying 2018 was the last time we were good. Yeah, after no, that, 100%. like, all the wins were fluky. Like, Bill Belichick, one win away from, yeah, from, from the beating Dallas. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I said, yeah, fuck the Bears. Right. Yeah, the Bears always said, fuck that. Okay, you're not no, taking no. Hallis' record on us. No they, way. They, they, they kind of yeah, they did. Sure. Like, I noticed early on, like, even on our punts, like the punt team is flying to the football. We were getting extra yards back on our kick returns and punt returns. Like it was just stuff you never saw out of the Matt Nagy coach team. You know, we I came out was, there. We like, what did you, yeah. he, uh, we scored, and to regain, they they took the lead after the after uh, Bailey Zappi came in, and then we came back and scored, and it was like you feel it took the air out of them, and then on the kickoff. I don't know who it was. It was special teams guy, number 50, laid the fucking boom. Yep. Laid him the fuck out. I don't remember who it was, but I, this ball, they had two Patriots down like this, and Bears people were celebrating. I was like, what's going on? What is, what's going on? Yeah. Are we, did, we, did we just release like, him? I had, I had a note about it's that, time. too. We're back. It's we come out, we have a great start. We've seen a billion great starts in our lives. They come back, they punch us right back in the mouth. Zap, Zap yeah. comes in, takes the lead, two straight touchdowns. And then every single every, every single other Bears team yeah. folds right then and there. Uh-huh. They come back and take the lead. The crowd's back into it. The wind's out of our sails. We're done. No, they came back, scored again. They came back, punched them right back. I loved it. I, like, I came in, even into this game, I was questionable off that new coaching staff, the new regime. I'm all in. Uh, it's not yeah. even just Justin Fields that's giving me hope for this new all era. Yeah, it's no, the coaching staff's got to figure it out. I'm all in. If you right. break down the film, Justin Fields is so clearly being coached well from the decision making and from his vision. Because I, I, you know, yeah. from the beginning, I, I, I was telling you, and I always mention Clay Harbor because he breaks down film awesome. Very nice, yeah. And I always say that he he points out how many times Justin Fields is missing his targets, and this game. You know, and it is just one game. So it's like, okay, you know, we're jumping at conclusion maybe a little bit, but he looked fucking dynamite. He was making the right decisions. 
he was, he, you know, even even that stupid little fucking screen pass he had, which was a terrible spiral. But it's Herbert, no, nine out of ten Split times, it, take it. nine out of ten take times, it. he, he throws it the first time. Yeah, and he he. And was that a bad throw? Yeah, throws. but when you're getting clobbered from two guys against the screen, you just got to get it out. Hard get it from point A to point B. It doesn't matter. If, so yeah, yeah, basically, it doesn't yeah. fucking matter if it's a bad throw as long as it gets to the guy. These are professionals the that he's throwing to. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that good of a throw. Right, right. 100%. And Luke Getze, I've been a hater of Getze. Call the hell of a game. Against yeah. the greatest coach of all time, yeah, the greatest yeah. defensive football mind we've ever seen, Luke Getze outschooled him. Yeah. yeah, Justin Fields. We it finally felt like we were putting him in positions to succeed yeah. and not just expecting him to do it all. And this is also with, with Fields. It's like we never had that game where is he the guy? Is he not the guy? We don't know because he has he doesn't have weapons, but we need to see at least one game of him where he can just win something on his own. And that's basically what he did. He took it into his own hands against one of the greatest coaches. No, the greatest coach of all time. So Absolutely. he just shoved it down his throat. So – the way Justin feels, it just makes you more confident going into next year. All right, we can trust this guy with weapons. We can trust this guy with an offensive line. So we'll be ready to roll next year. And maybe you can see something like how the Giants are this year, you know? With that $134 million in cap space, you talk, Bro, you have so much fucking money. The, the opportunities are endless this offseason. Literally, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Oh, hey, uh, well, not whatever, but. You can spend as much money as you want. You can do whatever. Even if Justin's not saying it, even if he's not the guy, he can spend money on a good quarterback with the Even if, even if I want to do it, I want to do it. Hey, I want to do it. Well, you finally got to be in the finally got a good field game. You're out here talking about something. You know, I have to throw with the monkey. Who are we going to spend money on? Look at what the Colts are doing. We're going to go out and maybe, maybe if. Work deal Rodgers, get his contract, could be nice, could be – what if Rodgers – This, this, right is, this right is his now. last season. Yeah, oh, he's not. No, you didn't know that Mikey loves Rodgers. I do not like him. He loves Shut Rodgers. the fuck up. I'll, I'll, I'll bet on him. I'll bet on him. Yeah, because you love him. Oh, my God, I hate the guy. Yeah. You know what? I'm out of here. I'm lost. All right, see you, Bob. All right, so we have Bears. Bears are back. Bears are good. Now, let's look at the schedule. Tell me how we're going to do. You, you think – do you think that we should tank or do you think that we should go for it? Well, we have we have Elliott's Cowboys up this week. Right. So, let's talk how's, about that. How do you feel about that? I feel bad for you guys. Do you? Uh, there's <laughs> well, a, I mean, do you think there's quarterback controversy in Dallas? I was going to say, are we playing Cooper Rush? Because then I would be afraid. If we got <laughs> Dak and we, we're good. I mean, not at all. Because either way, I mean – Talk, you hear Cooper Rush talk, Dax is quarterback. So, I mean, he's not going to go against Dax either way. Well, so, but no, I, well, only one I'm worried about, on the field. Yeah. I'm worried about Justin Fields this week. You're yeah. worried about our guy. I'm worried about Justin Fields. I'm Fields. telling you right now, that that the Cowboys are right now. What, the, what are the Cowboys doing right now? That defense is in the film room watching, worried about Justin Fields. How the fuck is he doing this quarterback sneak so well? I mean, why the fuck is he getting Drew, this rollout? Drew Don so leads good? the league in oh, shit. In sacks. Hey guys, hey. the Dallas Cowboys. Sacks, they're first in the league. Yeah, with nice. 29. That's Quarterback nice. pressures, first in the league, 32.6%. Uh -huh. Right. right. Quarterback right. hits, tied for first with 56. Tackles for a loss, tied for first. Or I'm sorry, first overall with 44. Right. And their first overall with holding penalties not called because Mike Parsons is fucking called or is, is getting held every single time he's rushing the passer. Does not get the play. How's the rush defense? The Khalil Mack. Uh, rush defense? No idea. It's like 24th. Doesn't matter. I but it does matter when the Bears have the second best hey, fucking rushing in the I league. I have a stat about Michael Parsons against the run. He's thanks. I He's, forget the exact stat. He looks like two after, after a hard hit. Dude, do you look at the Cowboys defensive backs, though? They're leading the team in tackles. So yeah, those because, DBs, because, because they're because catching them. They're 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 catching Montgomery over on this game, I'm probably going to hammer. I'm also going to probably hammer Herbert's Herbert over, over yeah. as well. And I'm also going to hammer the – Just the field's over. Oh, yeah, Russia I might do that too. too. Yeah, because that would be pretty nuts. I mean, this is a game where I can confidently go into it and say, yeah, I do like the Bears this game. And that's exactly when the Bears lose, though. And, and that is exactly why I'm not betting on the Bears this week. But I would like to bet 
all of you guys in the Bears. I know. You, you sound like so it. confident right now. You're just saying, okay, all See, these guys are going to come out there. This is a guy coming off a 24, on both running a 24 to 10 back. win against the, the Lions that you guys barely almost covered. Because you should have lost. You guys you got should have lost that game. Oh, yeah. 100%. So, Not gonna lie. It's, it's very weird that you're coming in with this confidence. As a, as a Cowboys fan, almost like you, if you watch the game, you know that you barely beat the Lions. No, but the Bears, the Spain Patriots. And I'm not, I know it's all about matchups, but now we're talking matchups. When you look at the Bears offense with running versus the Bears defense or the Cowboys defense against running, I feel like the Bears have a much better opportunity. Now, you go to the other side of the ball, the Cowboys offense, if you look at where he got surgery on his hand, it's hard for quarterbacks to come back quickly and grip the ball. You see the Russell Wilson injury. So you're going to see the same thing with Dak, and Dak is going to have that problem. Is he going to be the decoy this week? Is he going to? Is it going to be the rush game? Because if you're going to try to rush against the Bears, that's fine. You'll have a good chance to do it. You'll have a good opportunity. But last couple of games they started to tighten it up. So who knows if Dak can throw? If Dak's Dak and his old self. Then sure, yeah, he, the, I feel like the Cowboys are should be gravy, but with that thumb, with the surgery that he had to get in here, it's it's going to be hard for him to grip the ball fully until about week nine or ten. So until then, I can't bet on the Cowboys at all until I know that either they're going to start Cooper Rush or they're going to let D- Dak come back. You know, I think they're rushing him to come back in the first place because Cooper Rush is doing Cooper just Rush fine. was about to take that job. Yeah, I think he that's why. Like, yeah, no, no, fine. I don't think he can grip the ball. All the way. No shot. Cooper Rush has a live arm. I was saying that since day one. God's sake. And that's the thing I hate about Cowboys Twitter is people were hating on him like the second he took over. I'm like, dude, Cooper Smash Rush has a football. live arm. Yeah. But they're going to put that and like, on it. I don't – I like straight up, Cooper Rush is obviously not a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. But what I think it changes with the Dallas offense. Why? Dak Prescott was a fifth round pick? I, like if you just look at talent versus talent, Dak Prescott I think is inarguably better than but I think when I, Dallas is, I, I, I don't. I just think he's, he's proven been, it. He's proven it. Yeah, exactly. But Cooper Rush has had the like uh, you look it. at the highlight tape straight up versus straight up. Dak Prescott has better highlights than because Cooper Rush has not played. It's more so like decision making, like he's arm talent, like talent, athleticism. Cooper, Cooper, Cooper Come Rush on. has zip. Cooper Rush has let me, let me finish, finish you. you. I, 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 I agree with you too. I agree with you. He's got an arm. It comes off his arm good, but. No, I'm, I'm gonna let Rick. I think okay, I think yeah, what it does Rick for talk. the Cowboys offense is when Dak Prescott's in there, you're thinking, oh, I'm paying this guy forty million dollars. We have to let him air it out. We have to let him put up his stats because you have to. He's the franchise it. quarterback. He's the guy we gave a whole load of money, a full ass brains truck. They feel like they kind of have to be passing the ball a little bit. And he's also the guy where if wide receiver's not open, your first read, your second read, right. third not open. I'm gonna run the ball. Whereas, but what I'm saying though is the Cowboys offense, it's built to revolve around the run game. The Cowboys offense is at its best when Zeke and Pollard are eating carries, they're moving the ball, they're Whoa. controlling the tempo of the game. That's what and I when think Cooper Cowboys, rushes in, all they're doing is running the ball. I think, I think the Cowboys offense is the Cowboys opposite. and the Bears right now is that both of their backup running backs are better than their starting running backs. I think Tony Pollard take. Take. is better than Zeke. And I That's think, true. I That's think true. Khalil Herbert is better than. But him. all I'm saying with my point is, the Cowboys' offense is at its best when it's operating around the run game, and when the run game is controlling the tempo and the, the pace of the game. And when Daxon, they feel a little more outside pressure to throw the ball. So that's why I like Cooper Rush and why I'm more afraid of Cooper Rush is because when he's in, the Cowboys are just ground and pound, shove it down your throat, stop us if you can. Hey, I like what you said right there, though, because this is going to be a uh, telltale sign. Zeke is out this week. Yeah. Tony Pollard is he? Started. I didn't see that. Was quest- questionable, no? No, he's out. I, I thought I heard he's out. Okay. Right. But I also love this, though, because I think Tony Pollard, I 100% agree with you. There were plays last year where if Tony Pollard was a starting running back going into the playoffs, he was going to make plays that Zeke would not make. Yeah. If he would have got the ball, he would have got the edge. He would have made plays that Zeke couldn't do. But, but I feel like but Zeke is a, a – the best pass blocker in the NFL at the running back position. So the Cowboys are going to see that this week. And I'm so happy that the Bears got rid of Robert Quinn this yeah. week because, God okay. forbid, he was out there. That could have been a disaster. I think the, the difference with the two, 
the two Zeke's more of like a Ferrari, or like a sports car, or no, no, Pollard's more of like a Ferrari sports car, like a big play, a little more athleticism. Zeke's just like a classic F one fifty. Yeah, he's gonna ground up. Pound, he's gonna I'm get the shot. I'm gonna say Zeke's, gonna block for I'm you. Say Zeke's like price. a Cadillac. Tony Pollard's like Bryce, a Cadillac. That's price different. Story. Story. That's the other you way pay around. a running back. That's your own here's, problem. Here's the thing with the Cowboys: the Cowboys will die on their hill of who they paid as the right person. Can't so Dak Prescott is the better quarterback because Dak Prescott's right. got that boo-boo Spot on. Bucks. Spot on. Zeke Elliott is the better running back because Zeke Elliott got that boo bucks. But in reality, Tony Pollard's better you, and Cooper Rush is better. You pay a running back legal tender, you get what you deserve. Exactly. You don't so pay how a much running back legal tender. $75,000. Dude, talk about something. Well, are you giving me 50 50 odds? Because Vegas has is a right. plus nine. I'd rather just take it on the sports book than you know, straight up with you. You just said 75,000 right there. Yeah. You give not me a cashier's check, I'll, I'll throw it down. <laughs> 75,000 will not be bad. Uh, speaking of 75,000, your buddy almost just hit a shout out, Joey J. Fucking 50. What was it? Well, I mean, this whole weekend, I think we all hit parlay. So let's talk about the almost parlay. So. The first almost parlay was a $50 bet from Mike's buddy. And it was probably one of the greatest, uh, I mean, luckiest bets. I mean, you guys. Thad Young. Oh, Thad Young. Yeah. Right. Shout out Owen Noble. Shout out, shout out Owen Noble. Owen Noble? Yeah, yeah that's our that's guy. That's my guy. That's, dude, he's the he, greatest. Me and him became friends because he didn't vote for me in the burn of the year bracket. And now we're that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You were all right. I made it all the way to the finals in the burner of the year. Break. Did I vote for you? You voted for me all the way through. See, that's the thing. It was Owen Noble that was hating on me. Piece of but shit. Stuff, yeah, piece we of we were familiar with each other. Yeah, one now second, now one we're second. close to your friends, Owen Noble. <laughs> Good. If you're listening, shout out. Oh, he's always listening. Shout he's out, always. Owen. He's popping out. What is the one big factor between the Bears and the Cowboys that you guys did not talk about as the biggest difference and the biggest problem for the Bears for the past however many years? Well, I'll two, say two words. I'll say Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon Diggs is going to be a problem for the Bulls. Anybody. That's not his name, is it? Anybody. Anybody could think of. Offensive bit, line. Thank you. No, oh, did I it? Yes, you did. 100%. No, no, no. Dude, because the Cowboys Dallas has had line. the top offensive line, top 10 at least. Yeah, for we already talked about this, because, Johnny, for pass rushing. We don't need, we're not going to No, I'm talking about why miles. Dallas has the edge. It's offensive line and defensive line with the pass rush. Bears money. Mm-hmm. They don't have the best. No, Bears plus nine, possibly. I like plus nine. It's a lot of fucking points. Yeah, it is. I, I will say the in. Cowboys' the line has been coasting on Offensive line is so important, and we need to build it in the draft. So I'm happy we got a fourth-round pick. We'll take they had it. the best line Let's get offensive like defense alignment. Even if you're you're taking draft capital, even if it's a fourth round pick, you don't even have to take that fourth round pick. You can bunch that fourth round pick with a bunch like you could bunch a fourth, you can bunch sure. a second, get a first. I'm happy you with that and fifth, you bunch a freed up cap space for the future. There's so much there's so many opportunities you can get when you're planning for the future, knowing that you're not winning now, and that's how you win. White boy Rick is out of here. I'm charging my base. Oh, it makes yeah. sense. Shout out to uh, Jewel. Right, hey, let's do a pause. Hey, All right, pause. Pause. What do I do? I hit pause on this? No, we'll uh, cut it. We'll cut it. Um, cover Robert Quinn. Mac Jones is starting this week. Okay. His name Dalton starting again for New Orleans. Hold on one second. Let me get my pen out. TJ Watts back to practice for Steelers. Wait, are we Fuck, yeah. Pausing right now? yeah, we're pausing. <laughs> You're all good. I won't bet anybody. I'll do plus nine for sure. I'll, I'll put plus nine, but you know, plus nine. No, Mike said. I mean, he doesn't money. mean seventy five dollars. You think he's gonna pull out? So he's just hammered right now. <laughs> a lot. Be- uh, I mean, a money line bet's gotta. If he bets fifty bucks, you'd have to put up seventy five bucks. That's how. Yeah. If you're gonna do a money line bet with this game, nine fucking points. <laughs> that one looked very bad. <laughs> Wait, what? What's the score right now? You, you probably didn't hear me. Um, Bulls up 10. What's the score? 1393. Bulls are up 10? 10? Yeah. Wait, let's see. I got, I got the spread on the game. It's not good for all of us. You got oh, oh so my God. I, <laughs> I think it's that was like, a dirty punch. Bro. I think it's a lot of time. Down. <laughs> Wait, let's try Kelly Bird. Oh, well. Eight. Eight. Okay. Assist. Two boards. Brother. What do you say you have? 31 and a half? 31 and a half. You only need six more. Yes, I know. Where the fuck Let's going? go. Dude, you're back. Yeah, 100%. You're you're back. Back. I you had, start out the first quarter with like nine total. I gave Big Cat uh, over 13 and a half points. <laughs> and uh, for Buddy Heald, he's got 21. 
And I also gave him uh, over 10 and a half. He's only got seven. So we need those two to hit. That'd be nice. All right. So we did this. Talk this. Uh, here, Johnny, what were you saying now? Say who's starting? Dalton starting? Johnny was making some great points I wanted to bring up, but I don't want to beat the Cowboys to death over here. Beat them to death? No, I just made one point that you guys didn't, you guys didn't talk about the offense line. It's like something that Jerry Jones actually has done right over the past five And years. defensive line. For sure. Yeah, no, you guys touched on that, though. I was just getting at, like, the big thing. I mean, Zach Martin, best, one of the best of fucking offense line. They lost Smith in the fucking offseason. Forgot the new guys named Stephen in. Zach Martin gets hurt, too. But they're, they're a top 10 offense line every Zach fucking year. And honestly, week. if they weren't a top 10 offense line, they would not be that fucking good. Didn't someone get carted off the field? Tyrone Smith. Uh, so Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis got a pick and they got carted off the field. No, we wanted their own line. I know Jordan Lewis, Jordan Lewis, which that I was gonna bring that up. Now Kelvin Joseph's gonna be starting at cornerback, which they he's very questionable. I mean, two guard corner. It doesn't matter. Receivers are so bad. It doesn't matter though. That's like, dude, that's big for us though, because dude, Jordan Lewis, you gotta talk about like Mikey. You were talking about the quarterbacks for the Bears. Yeah. We got young dudes playing in the backfield. Mm -hmm. They're ballers. Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, dude, those were our first round draft picks. That now they're coming to form. They're fucking Sixers, we won it for. We can't beat Toronto. Browns playing well. Just beat the Heat. Now the fucking Sixers. I wrapped his money line. Fuck him. I yeah. I gave. Uh, I need. No, I need. No, hit you. I need to give you my card. <laughs> you might get your number. Dude. No, dude. I had. I went zero and ten to start the NBA season. So you know, I'm finally. Hey, Matt, I'm finally rebounding. I'm Ollie, regressing to the mean. I had like a few in a row. Holy bad, fell, man. NBA and MLB. MLB is so hard to bet. Oh, I love that. The hardest. Thank you. I don't even fuck with There's that. a point where the Sox, did, Sox lost like nine straight. And after like, like three losses, I'm like, Sox gonna win. Sox gonna win. Sox gonna win. Just pound hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. Dude, so every I'm like, so fuck I, this. I, I, bet, I bet something every single White Sox game because I watch them all and it just makes it more exciting. Yeah. But I rarely bet on the Sox. I just I picked players to so emotional. I picked players to get hits and, and strikeouts and stuff yeah. like that. I tried out that better at this shit sucks. What? Better? I never used I think it. I finished like. I tried doing it because it was just like, give me 5,000 like tokens. It gave you just a bet on like, I'll be like in traffic better on like balls to strikes. I'm like, fuck this, dude. All right, let's go game on. Game on, boys. Uh, what were we just talking about? I don't know. Well, let's We're talking the about the Cowboys and shit. Some NFL. So if you want to wrap up with NFL news, then give me into NBA. That might yep. be the vibe. World Series come up too, but fuck baseball. All right. Okay. Yeah, Russ is nuts. Yeah, Russ is nuts. All right. All right, ready? Three, no. two, one. All right, so we did talk about the Eagles trade with the Bears. We talked about Robert Quinn. We talked about uh, crying Roquan, uh, which literally Bleacher Report said Bears linebacker cries over trade news. Yeah. Shout out Bleacher. I, I can't stand Bleacher Report. What? I don't like them. I used to like them back in the day. They used to do the blogs like top 10, you know, back – you could do this. You could uh, top ten point guards of all time, and they would do like the list. Yeah. Now they don't do that. Speaking yeah. of, who are your top uh, NBA players? Yeah, we, we, we talk ball. Yeah. Talk talk ball. Ball. Talking. Well, I know ball. You know ball. I know ball. Rick and Stand, Rick, ball. Rick, oh, yeah. Stand, 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 Stand up for a second. Stand up for a second. That, wow, that, that guy knows ball. That guy knows ball. He's pretty tall. tall. Holy <laughs> shit! Hey, watch the lights. Watch the lights up. So, end the video too. About to knock one down. Yeah. So, basketball's back. Bulls are back. Bulls are two and two. About to go three and two and beat these fucking stinky Pacers. No offense. No offense. I'm a Bulls guy. Hey, you're a Bulls guy. Bulls are back again. No offense. All right. So the Bulls are hot. Can they maintain this? The over under for the Bulls was forty one and a half again this year. Is that disrespectful? That was last year. Yeah. Was they finish last year? 45 and something like that. That's not that. Much. No, it's disrespectful. It's like, I think they actually had 48 games. 48 games. 48 wins. 48 wins. Okay. Um, I don't think it's that disrespectful. Uh, no. no. <laughs> okay. Do you think there's point guard controversy? With the, with, uh, with the questions around Lonzo, I don't think it's disrespectful at all. No. Well, do you think there's controversy when he comes back? AO's a, AO's a I dog. I don't think AO is a true dog. No, I think he's a true dog. He's dog. Sure. I think there's going to be some tough conversations this winter with yeah. him being an unrestricted free agent and us having so much money tied up in Lonzo. 
So I don't, are you guys familiar with this contract situation? Yeah. Who, Rope? Oh, no. AO. AO? No, what is the contract? So when you're a second round pick, you pretty much have two options. You can take the four-year contract and you can take the four years of guaranteed money. Okay. A little more safety. Or you can more so bet on yourself and take like a two or a one-year deal okay. and go into that in unrestricted free agent. He took the second. He only took a two-year deal. So he is going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. Somebody's going to pay him. It might not be us, but that's kind of the nature of NBA free agency. If you don't pay your guys, the Sacramento Kings are sitting in the corner waiting. Literally, literally. I, you know so what? I, like, we have so much money tied into Lonzo. He has all these questions around him. I think I love Lonzo. I think he could absolutely be the point guard of the future if he's healthy, but – and Ayo is going to be, he's going to force our, he's going to force our hand. He's going to force us to have some very difficult conversations being an unrestricted free agent this year. If Lonzo is okay, if he is the old Lonzo, I could do it. I'm okay with, I'm okay with Ayo becoming a Sacramento King. If, wait, if it means that Lonzo is a help, comes back healthy, I'd rather have Lonzo as the starter than Ayo. But his history doesn't say that he's ever going to come back up. That's the one thing that I don't like about it is, like, his history just says he's not going to be healthy. When you look at Ayo, dude, he is a leader on the court but every you, time he's out there. Do you think that Ayo's talent is equivalent to Lonzo's talent, like the money? You no, think? no. And But I do think that he can get there. Okay. And that's why I like to I call agree. him Ayo. I'd be like, Ayo, because every time he's out there and he's doing his thing, I think anytime I say his name, I just think a different. Kind of I just say, I just say, Ayo. Ayo, Ayo. One of them's got. Ayo. Ayo. No, I, I stick with Ayo because dude, when he's out there, dude, he went six for six the other day when he was playing against the Celtics. Dude, nine for ten last night. Yeah, nine for ten. Celtics. You know that that last shot was a miss by uh, Zach Levine. They counted it for Ayo, so he actually went nine for nine. Really? Yes. Yeah, swear to God, you can look at the stat. Bro. Dude, either way, I retweeted it. Dude, the guy's a leader. He plays on both ends of the court. Yeah, like you, you, those are the guys that you hope to draft. He was he was coaching up Andre Drummond. So there was a, a clip that came out. He was, I think Drummond almost got attacked. He was complaining to the ref, and I went up to him and was like, "Dude, chill out. And this and that. You gotta do. You gotta play your role. Play your role." And he just calmed down. You could just see him calm down. It's like this is a sophomore going up to a veteran in Andre Drummond, and he's calming him down. How much leadership do you think that this guy? This guy, he's so young. How much do you think that he has over this team? I say two two more years. If they do sign him and they they part ways with Lonzo and whatever that that happens, if he becomes a starting point guard, I'll be happy with it. I won't I won't have a problem with it. But is that long term? You think that he's going to be our lead starting point guard? That's what's tough about it is after two years, you're right in this in between with any NBA player. They're well, either about to explode. Or they're about to kind of just level out and they've already shown you everything they got. And I'm personally of the first opinion. I legitimately think this guy, he's got yeah. all the intangibles and the tangibles to be a starting point yeah. guard in the future. I'm just worried that we have all these assets tied up in Alonzo right now that we might be afraid to pay him what he's worth or pay him what another team would pay him. I say pay the fucking guy and then hype Alonzo up. Yeah, you just changed my opinion. Hype Alonzo up to his best potential. Tell, him that, tell every team that he's back. Like, he's, still, he's, he's the next good. thing since sliced bread. Throw a couple highlights of him and then try to trade for whatever we get, I guess. I, mean, I love Lonzo. I The Bulls are so too. much more fun to watch with Lonzo around. As a child of the Derrick Rose era, I'm – Point guards with knee issues, I'm kind of all right. All right, so let's talk about shooting guards with knee issues. How do you feel about – how do you guys feel about Zach Levine? This is tough. He's, though, huh? He just had a sound bite come What's out. He just had a sound bite come out like a day ago where he was like – somebody asked him about playing back-to-backs, and he was saying like, oh, I'm just going to take every game by game and like see – He's another guy with knee issues. That's so – And his seem like that's recurring. That's some fucking recurring. pussy shit, bro. That's some pussy shit. I'm so tired of it. Kawhi Leonard, some pussy shit, bro. You want to come off the bench? Just don't fucking play. You're a starter for a reason. What is the point of coming off the – What's the disagree. point of coming off – No, stop. Hold up. Wait. What's the point of coming off the fucking bench? Why don't you just start and roll with your minutes? What are you coming off the bench for to come – Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. You're going to play fucking 15 minutes a game. Why not start the game? Come out with some energy and some balls while you got your medication in you, whatever they're fucking shooting you up with. 
right before the because game. What's worth more? What's worth what? more? Zach Levine at 80% for a random game in January or Zach Levine at 100% for the Eastern Conference? I've playoffs? seen him at 100% in the Eastern Conference fucking playoffs, and he stinks. He stinks sometimes. Yeah, but remember when Zach could just do cool dunks? <laughs> cool dunks? All right. Yeah, come on. But no, <laughs> he's sick. Hey, I, I agree with you. I agree with Rich Point. Yeah. Oh, but well. at the same time, you have to play. You have to play games. You just have to play games. And that's what the NBA is all about, dude. It's a long right. season. You got to be on the court. You have to play Rick games. Rick is mad. Oh, you to fuck Listen, up Rick, is, up Rick is mad. Hold on. Rick is, Rick is about to explode. Listen, I'm an NBA guy first and foremost. Absolutely. I'm, I'm huge NBA okay. guy. And I, I feel like as the young guy here, I'm a little more leaning towards guys sitting out. No. Towards oh, out. No, 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 no. You know what? I'll say it right now. Right here, right now. LeBron's my go. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's all I'll say. I'm the, new, I'm the new generation. You can't, of say, NBA you can't say you're a shit. So I don't. And say LeBron's a go to the same. When were you born? When were you born? 1993. 93. You remember watching Jordan at all? You got in, any in the late 90s. Yeah. Very honest Mikey, about when were you born? <laughs> Oh, okay. you're, you got some great. I actually, no, 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 first of all, if I they, if they say the they remember it, they're lying. I don't remember. I'm it. the oldest one out of all of you guys, and I say I don't. I wasn't old enough to appreciate it. I, you want to know why? You want to know why? Why Jordan's the goat? Because I grew up. I started becoming a Bulls fan in 2002. That was the Eddie fucking Curry day, the Tyson Chandlers, the Marcus fucking Pfizer's. These cocksuckers sucked at basketball. I'm ben Gordon. Ben Gordon was good. He's a baby boy. These cocksuckers sucked at basketball, That's which tough. made me, what would I do at 7.30 after the Bulls lost 102 to 74? Guess what? I'd go to fucking NBA News and watch a Bulls highlight. Oh, my God. The Bulls NBA be classics. I'd go like this. Or ESPN what? classics. What? Do you fucking remember? Do you even know what ESPN classics is? Yes. yes. They were, oh, channel. Channel. Do it. There's not today. today. What are you talking about? ESPN Classic is still channel to uh -oh. this day. Uh oh. I just don't have cable anymore. Yeah, are you forcing me to have cable? I love oh, my mother. Are you doing that? Oh, oh my it's, it's, it's a four out. It's a four out. <laughs> Come on. No, all I did during the peak lockdown of COVID was watch full games of Jordan. And, like you, all, yeah. and you still say that LeBron? I just I have actual memories with LeBron. Oh, like, so it's a memory oh, thing. Oh, yeah, oh, no, oh. like I'm okay, biased okay, because okay. that's who I grew up watching. Like it's a tangible thing that, like, I 2016 finals. That was like the peak of I, being an NBA fan for me. I have a real question. I have a real question. Mine was 2010. Do you, do you watch? Do you watch ESPN classes? Like, or like recently, have you watched it? I don't like tune into the channel, but I watch old sports games all the time. Like okay. I would consider myself up to date with. I'm just classics. wondering, like, if if like I were to turn on ESPN Classics right now, if it is still a channel, would like a LeBron championship be on? In like, ten years from now, it would. Be, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you're like, gonna argue like, LeBron doesn't have classic, yeah. if you're gonna argue LeBron doesn't have classic moments, I'm gonna run you out of town right fucking now. He does have classic because you you can argue who has more classic moments between him and Jordan. Right, right, yeah. Well, LeBron, well, LeBron has, has got his name I, I etched saw, all over the. That's NFL. because he, he loses so many fucking games, he has to get to game seven to come back from fucking three one. Jordan never did that because Jordan's not a fucking sneaky loser. The What's second LeBron's and third. Right? The, don't even bring up finals record around with me. Oh, oh here he goes. This is another yeah. question. <laughs> the second and third best players in the league teamed up because they were so afraid of one man. I'm not using his record against the Warriors against him at all. Johnny's got a question. They assembled the question. most talented. Are you oh, you, you, yes, 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 yes. The oh, Miami Heat. Miami Heat. Yeah, yeah, Miami 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 right. Because yeah, the like, Celtics rock. Yeah. I'm going to have an ESPN special for me. Yeah. And I'm going to pick. I'm gonna and pick. who did that ESPN special benefit? Not me. The Boys and Girls Club of Cleveland. Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're, right, you're, right, hey. you're doing a sarcastic round of applause to charity. Right now. Look, in look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and say, I hate charity right now. Because that's what you're doing. I, I'm like, that's what you're doing. I'm Mike DeFrisco at Mike DeFrisco on Twitter. And I hate all Cleveland charities. Okay. Yeah, fuck them all. Just as long as we're on the same page. Yeah, we're all, we're all okay. I'm on that page. I'm just three chapters. I'm just three sentences ahead of you. So you think that LeBron is better because of memory? That's basically what I just took away from it. Pete. I think no. Oh, I think John. I could give you very well. John wants to say some thought out. And John's talking let's about let him go. Let's, let's let him go. Yeah, let's let him go. I've watched the same amount of basketball as you plus five years. Uh -huh. Not as him. I always leave Jordan out of the discussion because, like you said, I agree with 
we did not watch Michael Jordan. You can watch classics, but we weren't in the song right. we every day after school watching Michael Jordan. It didn't happen. Okay, so we're saying the for, yo, we watched. For me. If the goat of who I watched. Stop Steph it, Mike. Curry, it's gotta be Steph Curry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> See, that guy's so good. Hey, I'm so listening. Good. I'm listening. They can they can keep being ignorant. LeBron, over here. I'm listening. <laughs> Best athlete that I've seen to play. The guy could play multiple sports, okay, hands down. But when it comes to the best athlete so, that I've seen on the basketball so. court with the killer instinct, that is Mr. Kobe Bryant. Kobe There's Bryant. nothing like yeah. watching Spurs, Lakers, Lakers, Celtics. Kobe Bryant has the it factor. Yes, he shot a million times a game. But as far as closeout and yeah. the Mamba mentality, cliche as it is, he is a fucking killer. And that is something, at least that I've seen LeBron, in his latter years, I do not see the killer instinct that Kobe always had. And for me, Kobe Bryant is number one over LeBron James, overlooked RIP. But LeBron, best athlete that I've ever seen grab a basketball. Maybe Giannis, he's a fucking freak too. Giannis Steph too. Curry, unbelievable shot. But Kobe Bryant gets overlooked in the two or three, but he's my number one after Mike for sure. Not because of what happened, because he has a fucking killer instinct. I think Kobe is most people's two or three. Kobe, I got him outside my top ten. I don't have. And you can go down for percentages, but I'm talking about fucking watching playoffs when I'm a kid. You said he's outside your top ten. I I got Duncan. I'm Tim Duncan is my favorite basketball player of all time. I got Duncan over Kobe all time. I'm talking about. Uh, I want the Rock to win championships, and I've watched Kobe win championships and LeBron. I've got more excited as a kid watching Kobe Bryant. As a Laker, he's ten feet. No, First of all, if you put, question, you take Powell, you, you take Powell, you take Shaq off the Lakers. Five, though. Of course you take Powell, you take Shaq off the Lakers. If you take fucking uh, Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade yeah. off the Heat, I don't think LeBron's winning one. If you take Kyrie Irving and you take Kevin Love off the Cavs, I don't think LeBron's winning one. Rick's so mad. Rick is pissed. <laughs> Charge my baby, <laughs> uh, No. I'm not I, mad, I just can't live with All right, so the original question, though, is, you texted this today and said, who are your top five? Who are your top NBA five? Active. Right. So active. let's go down the road. Right. Who are your top five active? So, so from five to one, I got Ja, yeah, that. Steph. We need to do a lot of shade here. Embiid. Yeah. Trim out the pad. Jokic, Giannis. Embiid, Jokic, Giannis? Yeah. Embiid, Jokic, Giannis. Wow. You got Jokic's too? Yeah, Jokic's. Jokic's. Two time MVP. Jokic's. Good at every position. Hey, let's start it here. Mike D, what's your top five? I talked to her Mike D, what's your top five? Ja, Steph, Jokic, Embiid, Giannis from five to one. Giannis is one. Ja's number five. All right. So I'm going to go with mine is going to be Tatum, uh, LeBron James. I, I moved it. LeBron James, Jokic, Luka Doncic. Three. John Morant and then uh, Giannis on the next one. Don't make me yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, five to one right now? Five to one. All right. Five, Jokic. Four, Steph. Three, Kevin Durant. Serving himself. Uh, seven feet tall can score from anywhere. Uh, two, Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's crazy. I'm sorry. That's crazy uh, that you have LeBron at number one. To this day, oh, to this day, from 2004 onward, the number one player in the National Basketball Association, his name is LeBron James. There's only one of them, folks. He's the greatest to ever do it. He's the greatest still to do it to this day in the year 2022, in year 20, at 38 years old. He's still the best to ever fucking do it. If these Lakers put shooters around him, it wouldn't even be a conversation. The only reason we're still debating this is because Rob Polinka has no idea how to build a team around LeBron. He dropped 31, 8, and 8 just last night at 38 years old. So at 38, you give him a team with shooters around him, it's a guaranteed trip to the finals. Since 2020, that's been the case. The only problem has been the Lakers front office. So Rick has uh, LeBron as the number one best player in the NBA right now, probably the worst GM in the NBA right now because he literally picked his team. He literally, he his literally team picked stinks. his team. I, I, are, we, are we ranking top five GMs right now? I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm just we're saying, not. I'm we're saying, top five players. Okay. Heavy, oh, yeah. heavy is the problem. Exactly. Right? So yeah. if you, and there's only one king. Oh my God. And there's Get only one king. There's only one king. There's only one king. There's only one king. There's only one king. I agree. I will agree that LeBron is literally, and I've said this from the day that LeBron
LeBron stepped in the NBA because that was the biggest LeBron dick rider on the planet. No. He no. is the he, I said this from the day he stepped in the league. He will be the, no way. We're at 131. We need three more. Oh, it's going to hit. Oh, we need three more. Oh, it's going to hit. Oh, Attention, ladies and gentlemen. The over is going to hit. Uh -huh. Did you get fouled? Uh -huh. Either either white boy Rick is going to be here or so uh, let's just uh, so we'll wait. So when we're talking NBA rankings, LeBron is here. The rest of the no, field I is here. LeBron at four. I got Luca, LeBron, Steph. No, uh, who's the other one? Luka. I got Giannis at one. And who's two? Uh, Jason Tatum or no? Uh, KD at two. Jason Tatum at three. Did I name six? Luka. Oh, you got Tatum at three. Wow. Luca, LeBron, Steph. Yeah, you name six. I'll take six. On the real note, <laughs> without yelling to defend my point, the reason I still have LeBron at one, even though he's unquestionably lost his step, even though he's unquestionably not still a player he is, his basketball IQ is still on such a different level than everyone else is out there that when he needs to, he can still control a game for all 60 minutes if he needs to. I will say, yeah. When I, I think about LeBron, all I think about is 2018 game seven against the Boston Celtics. Where the end, all 60 minutes he controlled the tempo of that game. Boston, their strength that year was running the fast break. LeBron got it. He slowed it down every single time. He ran his offense. He's a coach and a player out there at the same time. And he's the top one at both. I'm happy you're able to, to put a blind eye to all the, the championships against the Warriors. And well, I, like, no, like, the yeah, the finals record isn't great. Well, yeah, you like, he's not 6 0 like Jordan is, but the way I see it, like, that Warriors team on paper is the most talented basketball roster that's ever been assembled. Yeah, we and there is that. one reason why the, all those players got together, and it was because of LeBron James and their fear of LeBron James. Like, I'm not going to let the fact that Kevin Durant signed with that team overrule how fucking electric 3-1 against the 73-9 Warriors was. That's goat shit. 73-9 is the and one rolled around the rim. Yeah, and who, and who won the finals that year? It wasn't 73-9, it was the goal. That's an insane. All right, Bay, how's our overlook it? Baby, hey, one the and one rolled the wait, toilet rim right out. Wait, oh, no, I, I got the half. I got the half. Oh, we need – oh, no. They're not going to foul. No. <laughs> That's a push. That's a push. Wait, is I don't. I can't push. I have the half, bro. That's one of three. Oh, you got the half. Shoot it. Follow it. Follow it. Oh. <laughs> oh. It was after. Anyways. God damn it. Are you bullshitting me? Yeah, Tyler, 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 you're Vince, bullshitting me. Here. I'm not trying to derail the pot here, but you're bullshitting. No, you're fine, bro. That's that's all the pot is. And Mike D got it right. It's I, called the Mikey best. John Morant. We make our best. I don't give a, like right now today. In a I, yeah, it's seven, a loss. I had two thirty three. He's got the loss. Yeah, he's got to be in the top five. John Morant. Over Luka. Yeah, John Morant is a yeah, Morant is a yeah, yeah. I'm actually, and I'm also. It shouldn't have been that close. Over Jokic. And Jokic is great, but today no, I got Jokic. Jokic, seven, I think Jokic. Jokic is great. John Morant's in the top five right now. Yeah. I don't, like. That's just like, so fucking annoying. A couple of honorable mentions that no one put on the list. He's got springs in his fucking shoes. Dude. Donovan Mitchell. No one mentioned. No one put not, him in there. Hold on, hold on. Not top five. Not top five. Not top top five. I mean, look at the stat real quick. He's already John Morant. D-Lo, I like too. That's, yeah. Donovan yeah, Mitchell. Darius Garland out today. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to move on. No, but it's, that's it's that's just I need to. Just if it makes you feel better, I had a uh, over on. It was plus three seventy for Buddy Hill to get. Dude, Kevin, that's rough, bro. To get twenty points. That's fucking. And lock that four, two, three, bro. That's a. Uh, and I threw a lot on that. I would be surprised if Mike. Okay, Mike so here's face. my question for you guys. Here's my question. So John Morant's a top five player in the NBA, right? Yeah. Why are the Grizzlies 20 and 5 without him last year? Because they have a great team. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, stop, stop. I'll give it's you the same. Here we go. You're so top five if you elevate the team around you. Now, when the Bulls didn't have Derrick Rose, they it's still had a positive record. Joke him, no. They had a good. There's a positive record and there's 20 John, and 5. John Morant is averaging 35.3 points with. Six shooting 60% for three points so far this year. For Rick 60% at three point. Yeah. yeah. If you look at how many attempts? Times. Average five a game. That's actually insane. That's, that's yeah. actually uh, John, fucking nuts. John, John, John Morant is, is a dog. Uh, 
No, but I agree with your point. Though. Shout out, uh, shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. First one. What did you say? Ellie? No, I was gonna say Desmond Bain, fucking uh, Dylan Brooks. But it's a good supporting cast. That's like I, I do agree. That's why the Grizzlies are that good. Uh, I like Jaron Jackson. John they Lander's have a great team. For 20 from two but you do need a good team. I think they don't have all stars. They don't have. Imagine if John Moran had the talent that you know at his peak. Imagine if he gets the talent that LeBron or somebody. LeBron never had talent. That's the thing. It's like LeBron, LeBron never had talent. LeBron never had talent. Dwayne Wade, oh, the yeah, second yeah. best shooting guard in the league. Kyrie yeah. Irving won MVP over him. He was better than him. Oh, it's true. Kyrie Irving is is one of the is is. He went to the finals with Zebo as his second best player. No, it was Mo no. Williams. It is two. Mo Williams for the fifty piece on the Cavs. I don't know if you guys remember that. I thought the Cavs did not. To say that LeBron never had talent is insane. That's a crazy thing to say. It's crazy to say that, but it's also crazy to say he's surrounded by talent his whole career. I, there's a I don't think it's there. I don't think it's whole there's a career. There. Okay, wait. Right now, you can't tell me that he's not surrounded by talent. Okay, maybe Westbrook got bad for sure, but you're telling me that Anthony Davis is not talent. I'm telling you, the Lakers roster is no, old. It's bottom five. Not this year. Anthony Davis trash this year. When they, when they got off Anthony Davis, he caught what yeah. Anthony Davis. Here's a plot twist. Yes. Here's a plot twist. LeBron, LeBron made this team so shitty, so we have to call him the goat because we. They have more talent. He is playing chess and we're playing checkers. We're arguing, we're arguing some goofy shit when he's actually making the plot to say, you know what, I'm gonna make the worst team around me that I can, make me look amazing, and then have the excuse be there's no talent around me. Right. Even though I did have Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosch, Kyrie Irving, Anthony Davis. Remember, remember I respect Dwayne Wade. <laughs> so, every time we, we mention LeBron, we're going to ramble about LeBron. Yeah, you're right. I can't that is a dis- yeah, the guy. That, that is a disgusting make, allegation. We're going to make yeah. a we're going to make a Mikey Betts executive decision not to talk about LeBron. No, and we are going to move on to the NFL picks. Yeah, we have to move on to the picks, guys. It's 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 been a hot minute. Let's. I'll just say it. Last comment. I came in here. I was driving the car down to Addison, Illinois tonight. Uh huh. Making the hour drive, and I was like, I know this LeBron thing is going to be it's coming up. It's coming I, I knew up. I was going to have to go to war for that. You guys brought the heat, so did but I. I had the time. It was a great, there was a great little discussion right there. Respect, Thanks. respect on all ends. So John Moran's in your top five. I so for me, like it applies to all sports. Like I need to see playoff success you before I put you play. in that pan. Yeah. The play. second John Moran can take his team to the conference he finals, he's top five. Yeah, dude. He, I got to see him do it in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? All right. Is that not fair? It's fair. It's false. So he shot 23, so he shot 60. He's 12, he's 12 for 20. All right, yo, time out. Let's get topics of debate. Inspection on you know, Le- LeBron. We're going right to the NFL now. We're going to go right to NFL picks. Okay. That's on me. No, it's cool. I love, I love it. Hey, no, we're going to get a second with you, my buddy Daniel. Daniel, same thing. No Dan, iPhones. Daniel. He'll tell you about basketball from like seven. It's fucking yeah, crazy. Not, I, yeah, I'm like a basketball geek, bro. That's my hey, bet. Are we off? Yeah, we're off. Well, what I was thinking, like, when we have four people, and I'd be like the perfect Tony Corner. Oh, no, not Tony Klein. Who's the fucking dude that runs PTI? Uh, not PTI. Fucking. Uh, oh, the guy. Who, the guy that oh, moved. that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, around the horn. Like boy, it's around the horn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We should That's come so up with that. Hey, we should just... figure out a segment, dude, like a new around the horn segment. Yeah, no, that's a perfect. And like you guys are just great. Like I love you guys that are great. We figure out like show. on social media yeah, we get four. Hundred percent. That and stuff. And where I can do people, we got to figure it out. We're like on the Zoom host. Yeah, we got to make. We got to make a, a weekly segment. Yeah. That, and we get fifteen that, topics that, and debate it. That's not a bad idea. And then two gets the most. Place. Like a new version of social media, fuck around the horn would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we'd have to do live. Like, we'd have to. Have a It'd be like around the horn. We'd have to be very stuff. organized yeah. and yeah. very topic debated, and my mute button would be live. Brown, yeah, the you, we, <laughs> I, yeah, Kevin, minus mute button. This, oh, dude, we, I, I, I need a mute button. I need a third-party muter, honestly. Yeah, 
But no, let's uh, shift topics. Definitely edit a lot of that shit out, but we pick yeah, up where Mike's is the top five because we were doing our top five. Everything went scattered, but then yeah. once we went in the row, make sure the guy fucking hits that shit. Let's, yeah, uh, he'll cut it. He'll cut all right, let's, let's go right He works for uh, Barstool Vice Room. He's a part of the Barstool Vice Room program. Uh, uh, City Reed College. College. Uh, Reed Miller. I don't know if you know. He, he works for Frank's know. podcast, but he could be out. He's doing the podcast, so shout out, shout out, shout Reed. out Reed. Reed, shout out. All right, uh, three, two, is that? Wait, what? I've never met Reed. I don't know what he sounds like, and he hears my voice all the time. Isn't that nuts? That's weird. That's that's, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Well, I hear Reed's voice all the time. So, because we're, we're does it sound like he actually can't believe that? I gotta get back on Twitter, dude. I've been off because it's down season in crypto, so I've been chilling. But that's the only reason why. There you guys. You guys need anything to drink or anything? You guys good on drinks? Yeah. Where are my car keys? I'm from Boston. Dude, Kevin, sometimes I'll be. All right, let's get into the NFL. All right, I'll hear shit too. I'm like, look around. I'm like, fuck this. Dude, in a big warehouse. Yeah, I imagine. Gotta be a lot of echoes. Yeah, dude. Fuck it. I'll do some. Yeah. Are right, you guys ready to rock? This is still recording, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, all right. Three, two. All right. So I think we had a good good talk for basketball. Basketball is good. Yeah. But uh, it's time to talk. Let's, to let's just spend a little more time on LeBron while we're here. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> my fault. My fault. Hand up. Hand up. You knew what you were doing. Yeah. You, I, you knew. You knew what you did. As soon as you opened the door, you said, Mikey, you texted me coming in and said, bring a top five NBA player bait. And I said, I know, I know I'm going to have LeBron at one and I know it's going to be contentious. So I apologize for derailing the pot, but. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. If, if, if there's a hill, I'm going to die. There's no such thing as derailing this pot. This whole pot is with a guy who's got like the greatest amount of ADHD in the world. Okay. This is the pot for it. So like, we're all good to go. Now, so, can I buy Adderall off you? Or? Not I don't think I'll, I mean, I'll wish, it. but. But if there's a hill I'm going to die on, it's LeBron. So that's the last thing I'll say. And Adderall. So shout out Adderall. <laughs> shout out LeBron. Let's go. That's, uh, that's put that on my gunstone, bro. Yeah, yeah, put that on my train stone. LeBron and Adderall. And, Adderall. And, Adderall. and then in parentheses, white boy Rick. White boy Rick. <laughs> uh, now, this podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Once again, betonline.ag. Make sure you guys use promo code MikeyVets. You guys will get a 50% match on your first deposit. Uh, so we're going to look at the lines right now, and we're obviously basing our lines off Bet Online. Bet Online is the greatest app. Uh, so let's look at it now. We'll start off with the first game. First game of the week is going to be Baltimore Ravens at Buccaneers. The line is minus one for the Bucks. Hmm. Yeah. Right I know you're still going to be mad. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, and the over under is 45 and a half. So the over under is 45 and a half, and uh, it's minus one. I cannot believe the Bucs are our favorite here. I agree, brother. Kind of looks like a trap game, I, but it, it is a pick I want to take. Right? I'm I'm looking at Baltimore Buttony line right now. I'm thinking it's got to be a rat line, but I'm thinking that's a rat line I'm willing to go down with the ship on. Yeah. Like, if, 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 if Ravens' money line is wrong on this Thursday night matchup, I don't want to be right. That's the way I'm leaning right now. Tampa Bay's a really bad team. They're, right. They're, they're, they're bad. Slow, they're old. They're – they're, they're not good. I've been fading Tampa pretty much every week, and it's never been wrong. So I, far. And you fade Tampa opposite. last week? Did they put the Panthers? Panthers? Panthers. Panthers. Uh, no, because I, I lost money on the Panthers. So you just stayed away. So um, just say, yeah, I was I'm gonna, I'll, be, I'll be the first sucker here to say that I'm going to go Baltimore 100%. Baltimore, Baltimore. the second sucker, because I – Oh, you team. said that too? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just I, – I agree this feels like a rat line. I'm sniffing out the cheese right now, and I gotta be honest. I feel like I'm quick enough to get the cheese out of the trap. So you're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna do this, and well, the trap's gonna, go, and it's gonna miss me. Okay, so you're gonna go in, go out. Get I'm, the gonna, I'm gonna go out. in. I'm gonna have my meal, uh-huh. and I'm gonna go home to my family. We're rats, right. brother. Let's, Let's go. go. So you, what's your what's your snap, snap after the dap guy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Elliot, who do you got? A couple of flannel guys over here. <laughs> I'm going to uh, Tampa yeah, Bay. Dude, Akeem mm-hmm. Hicks supposed to be back this week. Mm-hmm. Tampa or Baltimore is a running team. So, I mean, you can't go up the middle if you got Akeem right there. I forgot they even had Akeem. Yes. The only reason why they beat the Cowboys week one. 
because he was healthy. Keymix so he's coming back. I think healthy. they probably forgot they had a Keymix. Yeah, he's yeah. On the IR. It's always on the IR. So and I love the guy. Way, love the guy. I love you, Akeem. I know you're a listener of the pod. Yeah. yeah. No, he is. absolutely. Shout Actually, out. Yeah. Shout yeah. out. Shout out. Keep continuing. Uh, really sorry to interrupt. No, Tampa Bay minus one. I'm gonna take them. So are we all on Tampa Bay minus one? No, you're on Baltimore. <laughs> Listen, yeah, yeah. I was about to say he's the first <laughs> one, brother. <laughs> what are you on? I said both these flannel boys over here. Take sorry, I'm on Baltimore. Baltimore. So he's on Tampa Bay. I'm on Baltimore. Tampa Baltimore. minus one as well. I I like this. Is I keep saying it every week. This is a get right game for Tom Brady. How many get right games does this guy need? I don't know. Maybe this is a get right game for the wide receivers. Like you said, though, Akeem Hicks is coming back. I think that's a good move for them. Go over on the rushing yards for Lamar Jackson at over 54 and a half rushing yards. Well, though. Not a big Tom Bowles guy. Not a big Tom like Bowles. That guy cannot motivate his fucking Is that team. how you say it? If I'm, I'm a bit, I consume through reading. So I, like my Bowles, pronunciations Bowles are is like when you're taking the shit. Okay. Uh, that guy does not know how to motivate. So Lamar is getting out. into the bowels of the Bulls' defense, is what you're saying. I actually do love that bet though, because pressure yes. comes up the middle. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you got the pressure. You might not. You might not. Goes out. Every you see it. You saw it last week against the Browns. I, you saw it two weeks ago against um, I forgot what team it was, but every single time you see. Fucking line come in, Lamar rolls up. It's every single time, and he always gets yards. I've seen, I've seen it twice where he's got a loss. Huh? Justin Fields now. Too. It looks like Justin sometimes, yeah. He's, he he's, he does same. remind me of a young Justin Fields. Uh, now, JT is going to be the tiebreaker here. We got two on Tampa. We got two on Baltimore. It's not he, going in the parlay. It's not, it, it's not going in the parlay. What do you say? Sitting our father to my Tom Brady fathead every night. Okay. All right, Tampa minus one. All right, beautiful. I love it. Such a Tom Brady guy. He's such a dude. Look at him. Look at him. He's got the job. Guys, we'll have a last laugh. We'll have a last laugh, Mike. Yeah, All right. Can take oh, one. one. All right. Next game is uh, Denver at Jacksonville. This is a London game. Mind you guys, just so you guys know, I actually got to show this clip. Tampa Bay and Baltimore is in Germany. Just so you guys know, too. Germany, what? right? Yeah. I'm Wait. Doing Thursday so, night in Germany. I, I, when did that become a I thing? That I, Chris, there I is a German game, but there's no way it's a Thursday night. Especially game. after yeah, the Kanye conference. Is it next I mean, week? This is Hold human. On. Travel on a short week to Germany? Yeah, this, that's, that's, that's not. Sorry. Yeah, you've got to be wrong. But I know there is a German game. A it's German. You have to board the next week from your Tampa Bay, game. Seattle. Yeah. Next week, Tampa, Seattle's in Germany. Sorry. No, sorry. All good. That'd be really cool. They should do that. They should be like, Oh, you've Jack. got the Sunday night game and also the Monday night game in Mexico. <laughs> Roger Goodell is just maniacally yeah. laughing in his office, scheduling up the Thursday <laughs> yeah. night in Germany. That'd be a lot of fun. All right, yeah, you got Denver in Jackson. You got Denver, Denver in Jacksonville. You got Denver in Jacksonville. It's in London. In London. Yes. Now, I'm it's already gross. gross before you throw it. But seven. Jacksonville's a London team. I mean, play it's London. gross. They play in London like every year. There's a video that I'm going to play right now. And it is of Frank. I hope it's Nick can do too. Oh, also, we gotta play that a little bit of no, nope, don't want to get canceled. Do you? We'll play what? The rapper. Mine? Yeah. No, we no, can't, can't play that ever. Those those go in the lost. You'll files. get canceled for sure. Um, so I'll play this video right now. Frank is uh reacting to what happened on the plane for Russell Wilson, and then we'll talk about it. And uh uh, supposedly, he was doing. He was working out on the flight to, to London to see Brown, the Broncos were in London, and it was like the like the players are like like angry that he was keeping him awake on the flight to London. Oh wow! This is this is trending. He was working out and stretching, We're doing like high knees in the aisle while the rest of the team was trying to sleep. Dude, he's such a hardo. What's wrong with him? <laughs> and, you, and you look at the Broncos. The players in the Broncos all like, like every time he's like walking by, they're like they're like staring like 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 daggers at him. So, so for the people who didn't really understand what Frank said, Frank was saying basically, and that's the hardest I've ever seen Frank laugh. 
for the people who don't understand what he said, he's basically saying that on the plane, Russell Wilson, while everybody's sleeping on an eight-hour flight, he worked out for four. He worked out for hours. four hours while everybody was sleeping. Do you know how annoying that has to be? Can you imagine being that guy where you are not aware at all of anything going on in life that you're going to work out on the plane and think that's an okay thing to do? Can you imagine? Like, here's I got to be honest. I got to be honest. His team definitely lost sleep over that. They're not going to be well rested. No. Sign me up, here's, Jacksonville. Here's Miami. the thing. As a as a tall guy. If I get an eye up again, what's up? Stand, Stand up, up again. again, yeah. As a what? Yeah, tall. What's okay. up? Yeah. Six, 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 six. Call me. Six, six, six. <laughs> no way. No, I'm going to stand You're up. The measure let me stand up. I'm six, two. Damn, six. I'm five, ten. Oh, wow. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm five, yeah, nine. I'm five, ten. <laughs> no, but listen, here's my point. If I get the aisle seat on the plane, I'm my legs are all the way in the aisle. I'm yeah. stretching out. Yeah. I'm kicking back. That's the only way I can truly be comfortable on the plane. Yeah, I'm getting an aisle seat. I, everybody on the Denver Broncos is about my size, if not bigger, right? Can you imagine you're getting a good night's rest on your team's flight? You got your legs out in the aisle, and all of a sudden you wake up because Russell fucking Wilson is doing high knees. Oh, I would. I would. Can you? Yeah. You're, you're kicked back, relaxed. You just are. Yeah. Next to you, you look to your side and. The guy who's supposed to be your leader of the locker room is fucking doing high knees. No, I, hope the, I hope the linemen let everyone go on the first play of the game and let us get smoked. They just think it's it it like, 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 like if we day. if life was a Disney movie, then maybe that would get the whole team fired up to go out there and play Jackson. Yeah, or like right, maybe if right. it was like 2003. That's it's the only like situation. This. Come on, guys. Look at me. He is, he is he is he is um you know he's a guy who's heavy fucking heavy weights. He's uh, Ben Stiller. Yes. <laughs> Tony Perkins in. Come on, guys. Let's wake up and win the day. <laughs> and everybody else is just a fucking normal guy who likes to have fun, eat a little bit, you know, whatever. Just fuck that guy. That's you. Oh, yeah, it's me. So I'm related to the other guy way too much. Bro, that's, I just, I just spoke to Barstool. Fuck this. that guy. Fuck Russell Wilson. He used to be my favorite quarterback of all time. I used to love him to death. He used to be crazy. Used to be before all this shit came out about him. What? That's great telling. That, that, who's your favorite quarterback? What's, what's wrong with Russell Wilson? I mean, now, yeah. Now, yeah. How much time do you have? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now I don't like him. All right. Now I can't stand the guy. So this is why. This is why. Yeah, you're right. Put that, put that right in. Oh, very good. You did. Shout out to the blog. Make sure you guys check it out. MikeyBest.com slash blog. Uh, all right. Jacksonville minus two. That's what I'm taking on camera. Well, it's minus two and a half, though. Minus 2.5. This is the grossest game of all time, but I'm, I'll take the Jags. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, they are the London Jaguars. Give me a. I'm fading kind of, Russell. I kind of want to swap. I'm, I'm fading Russell until the cows come home. I could picture Russell just being like, just in, you know, Russell, we heard you were working. I was like, I just want to thank Jesus. Jesus did this. He saved me. He is my Lord. He's my protector. He's do they believe in Jesus and love him? No, but when Russell's there, they do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're going to take him plus 2.5? No, I'm on, I'm on Jacksonville. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah. All I right. still like Jacksonville, and uh, ETN's got the starting job, like, locked down now with James Robinson. So. White boy Rick, what do you say? Jacks is two and a half. I Still think we it. might have a friend yeah. for L. I gotta go Denver. Oh! oh. oh. Gotta be that guy. guy. <laughs> gotta go against the public. All right, plus two and a half. Plus two and a half, really. If they lose this game, Denver. If they lose this big, game. One of the biggest flop in the contract extensions, $260 million to, how old is he, 35, 36 years old? Well, look, 35, Russell, part 34, of me, part of me. Russell's like 30, 30 years old. No, he's 34 years old. 34. He's old. He's like, he's, he's old. I'm saying $260 million, Russell Wilson. I'm saying if they lose this game in Jacksonville, if they play great defense against Justin Herbert, so I'm going with the defense if they could play like that again. I think they squeeze out by a field goal. I hope for like as corny and how Russell Wilson is today and how we've seen him. I hope they get the fucking win, man. If they don't, it's gonna be bad news in Denver. Quick fire. Russell Wilson's going to happen. I think they're gonna fire Hack if they lose the next yeah, two games. This is uh if they lose Hackett's this game, the no, don't shot. get me wrong, Jacksonville Hackett's started off hot. Hackett's not getting canceled. Two and oh. I think, I, think I, I interrupted Elliot picking coach. Denver also. I don't know if you got any Big behind Denver, Elliott, but I'm going Denver. I'm going to flop. I don't feel good about it, but 
I'm going with it. I feel the exact same way. <laughs> That's why I'm going with Denver. All right. So we're uh, Denver, Denver. We got three on uh, Jags. Denver's lost, Denver's lost three straight. There's There's players players. I hate both sides. <laughs> yeah, like, this this is not strong. anything I'm putting money on. Stop Stop me. Put me on Denver. You're on Denver? There's no way they lose four straight. All right. Denver. Cool. Oh, you can look it up. You can switch bets. Yeah, I just did. I just did. All right. Hey, I Before I put it in, we're in. Uh, I thought we were riding together this week. That's fine. <laughs> just to do your own. Have <laughs> fun. Just, uh, just did a swap. Me and Mikey D on the same page for the next game. Night done. Minus one and a half. Las Vegas Raiders going to Las Vegas. Vegas. Oh, the you did. Fucking line. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, listen. listen. Kirk Cousins is the most relevant quarterback of all time. Very quarterback. true. Minnesota Vikings are at home. They are three and a half point favorite against the Cardinals coming into town. Uh, okay. I'm, I got a thought right here. Kirk Cousins, I'm the biggest hater of him of all time. At home in the new John. slate, that's basically like betting on Joe Montana. Yeah. Kirk Cousins at home in the noon slate. That's the go. You gotta take yeah, it. I'm, I'm taking it. I, 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 I tweeted that. And I hate Kirk Cousins. He's dog shit. But at home in a noon slate, that's. I tweeted that. Kirk when Cousins the, is fucking black. When the Bears were playing the Vikings, Kirk Cousins in a noon game is like 04 Michael Vick and Matt. Right? Yeah. Did you change your mind again, Mike? No, I haven't made up my mind yet on this one. <laughs> oh, who you got? Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not tailing this. Hey, I'm going Minnesota. No, no conviction over I'm here. going Minnesota, but I'm going to buy it down to two and a half. Because I, Minnesota and Indianapolis have the greatest home field advantage I've ever seen in my life. Indianapolis? Been, yes. Well, we'll talk about that later. But, dude, Minneapolis against Arizona, dude, <coughs> I'm buying it down to two and a half. I'm taking them all day long. All right. It's three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. So, I said I'm buying it down. Right. No, no, no. You can, but if this goes oh. in the front part, like you all right, I'm taking it. I'll take it at three and a half. Right. Won't I, won't, I want to buy down all my picks. It won't go to the front part. It won't go to the front part. It's going to be a minus 150. Because it's Arizona be minus plus 100. three and a half is the play. All right, I'll take them. At Arizona three plus and three and a half. And we honestly, might have. Might even. You're aware that a new Call of Duty is dropping this weekend, right? Hey, John, they said every game. This Here is every fucking game for Kyler. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's a good point. <laughs> well, it's always stay, like a, hey, stay, it's always hey, it's, hard with it's always stay. like with Call of Duty. Okay. It's always like oh, it's double XP weekend. It's all I see. Right, yeah. you fucking plays. But there is okay. a new call. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Moneyline. Moneyline Arizona. Love it. I'm on the same page. On Arizona. Yeah. His number one receiver is back. 100 yards receiving, 110 to be exact. The fucking guy is back. They got to win ball games with the guys out in Arizona. That's clip. He's out. Arizona, plus three and a half. Oh, are you guys still talking? Boring. <laughs> I got the two base, wannabe baseball players this week in Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray. All right. So you got the baseballers. Uh, all right. The lights out. Wait, Next right. game we're going to go is going to be. Who do you have? Who, me? Yeah. I'm taking the Vikings. Oh, you're such a dirtbag. You love the NFC North. Uh, anyways, we got the uh, Saints at home at the Dome against the 49ers. 40, or, I'm sorry, against the Raiders. The Raiders are a minus one and a half point favorite here. I am probably going to – I hear James is back. I hear James I is thought, back. I thought I got a notification about Dalton today. Oh, I hear Dalton's back. I hear Dalton's is uh, staying. So, <laughs> that is why I'm going to take the Raiders minus one and a half. I agree. Yeah, I'm taking Raiders. I'm taking Dalton any day of the week. Yeah. I have not a McDaniel's guy, there's, but there's simply too much talent there to fade. Dalton, and I, I'm not starting. Uh, who's the Saints coach? I'm not a fan of that guy. Dennis uh, Dennis Don Cheadle. Hmm. I, I feel sure. like the fact that none of us can. <laughs> I think the fact that none of us can name it off the Dennis top Allen, of but not tough. the Dennis Allen we know. It's a tough scene. They thought they were. Yeah, yeah. Not Wait, not you got to be pretty relevant for none of us to pull the name off. Dennis <laughs> Allen. Dennis Allen. That's a brutal name. Yeah. That's, an ugly it's a name. that's not a close name. name. Yeah, that's a stupid name. Dennis Allen was the I you can yeah. never trust the two first names, guys. Dennis Allen Dennis is, a, Allen. is a dad in a 90s sitcom for sure. You know, it's all right. All right. So I'm I going got New Raiders Orleans. You didn't ask me, but I'm going New Orleans. We're, we're, the guy with two first names, Sean Payton, shadow coach. Ooh, wow. That's a good point. Sean They're Payton. playing at home. Great defense. If Jameis does come back, which I don't think he is, we'll see over on this. Yeah. Michael Thomas may be coming back. They got, got some weapons. Do you have the over on that, Johnny? Because I think I would. 49 and a half. Oh, I'm not going to touch it now. Because it's a dome game, so it's nice, but I wouldn't touch it. Uh, I, I wouldn't bet no over on it. If it's 45, I'd, I'd hammer uh, it. Raiders minus one and a half. Raiders back. I got LB. 
My boy, Rick. Wait, what's going on? So you got the Raiders? Yeah, I got the Raiders. That's, that's the Raiders. All right. So, yeah, thanks. All right. so we're one away once again from the front of the pod parlay. Why keep being a lefty? He just keeps throwing. Just no pod. Out. Sorry. Just no parlay. There. <laughs> there, there might not be a parlay. So I, I feel like we're about to give an ATL sweep break. Cleveland? I don't know how you can take. Uh, the Panthers are going to Atlanta. Divisional rival game. Uh, Atlanta minus four. Give me the over under on this, John. Give me the Falcons. I'm taking the Falcons. 41 and a half. I'm taking the over. It's going to be a very chalk. I'm taking the over. It's going to be very chalk. I'm hammering the over on this game. Uh, usually don't hammer overs on conference division games, home division games. That Atlanta offense is all running. I don't know if I'll there's going to be enough clock. I'll take, I'll take it. I think it's going to be juicy. I think it's juicy. It's going to be the first time in Kyle Pitts' career. I oh, my God. And they give him the ball. I reached on him in fantasy, dude. That's, that's been a brutal year with him. You guys are all on Atlanta. I'm all on Atlanta. I'm on the. It's gonna be chalky. Like I can. I, it's gonna be like an 80 percent public. You on that? You on? Atlanta. No, I'm going Carolina. I'll take the points in, the, in a game like this. I'm taking the points because both those guys. I think. I think that last week was the Panthers Super Bowl. They're gonna be coming right. off an all-time high from last week, right. winning against the goat Tom Brady. This week, how are you gonna prepare from going into last week after a huge win? How are, are you guys going to take it easy? I would, I'm assuming they're probably taking it easy going into Atlanta versus what they did last week. So I don't think they're going to be as ready. I think Atlanta's going to come in and win. So, Let down spot. Especially after the fact they just got their ass rocked by the uh, the Bengals. There's no way they get spanked again after going 6-0 against the spread. They just lost going 6-1. and one. I think they go 7-1 against the spread this week. I would say never underestimate a team from the 52 grown mass man fighting for a job. Yeah, that's 53. all I'm saying. 53. 53. But you gotta remember, you remember that guy. that guy. No, no, hey, hey, I appreciate it. I you appreciate gotta it. remember. Hey, there you go. Hey. You're a man now. There you go. You you never underestimate 53 grown ass men fight for a job. But you gotta, you gotta remember that the Falcons are probably in the same position as. I mean, they're not having a fire sale the way that the Panthers are. But they're they're answering the calls. They're gonna listen to phone calls. They're probably a step ahead of that rebuild in uh, terms of where no, the Panthers are. They're probably a step behind because. I think they got more talent. They got I agree. Ryan Pace. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know who's above them? You know who's above them? <laughs> Phil Emery. So, so, so Ryan Pace's boss in the Falcons facility is. Well, I'll is tell Phil you Emery. what, I'm still low key a Phil Emery guy. No, you're not a Phil Emery guy. To this guy. day, to this day, how does the franchise have those two, those people? Why in the same building? Who, well, you know who's on that team? Fucking uh, Mario Edwards. Who else is on that team? Oh, no, I think he's on the Raiders, actually. All of these former Bears are now Falcons players. Why? Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson. Uh, Cordell Patterson. Let's not act like that has worked out for them. Put some respect yeah, on Patterson, though. He's hurt, though. Um, he's not playing. Are we an anti Cord Pat podcast? I'm, I'm off. I'm because I'm all the way. I'm pro Cord Pat. Patterson. Patterson. The he race. was the be- biggest recruiter for the Bears. Oh, yeah. yeah. During those his he tenure. Was and he was even a, like a what was his. What was his quote coming off the field? How about the year? Bears? How about the Bears? How about the Bears? How about the Bears? About the Bears? About the Bears? Yeah. I'm close to that after every win, brother. Dude, rest in peace. What a great guy. Uh, now he's on the IR. Uh, Shout out, Court Pat. I know you're a listener. He's dead. Uh, Court Pat <laughs> coming on the pod. He's dead on the field. He's dead on the field. I'm going to Atlanta minus four. All right. Uh, next game, we got Miami. Go. What? Atlanta minus four. Uh, ATL my wait, so we all got Atlanta minus four. No, he's no, on the side. He said he's on the side. Oh, okay. I'm I got, I got Atlanta uh, minus four. We got Atlanta. Like the way they play home against Atlanta. I think I'm just going to make it. I, I feel like it's going to be trouble. <laughs> I think, hey, <laughs> I just, hey, I'm on all I bet is probably. All I bet is probably. 24 10, 24 10 Atlanta. It's just going to be the under. The under is at 40, what? Or is that 45? Uh, what was that? The under is 41. Oh, yeah. Take the over. Take the over, too. I, I hate to see a 17 13 game. Who is PJ Walker starting quarterback? Yes. Of course. I like, I like PJ Walker. PJ Walker's a dog. Like I like him. the way they handle San Fran at home. Like San they got some turnovers, though. Sure. But. All right, Miami uh, in Detroit. Next game. I already know it's going to be a gross line, but I'm taking the over here. It's Ten three and a half. half. Oh, yeah. I'm taking the over. Miami. Oh, I, I know everybody and, and their mother is going to be on the over this one. I'm taking one and a half. Oh my 
I don't even know. If I don't even. I didn't, I didn't know the number. I don't care to know the number. I'm taking the over just for the. Fun. I'm taking Miami minus three and a half, and I'm going to fucking murder that one. Two is playing. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm, I'm on Miami. I'm still higher on them than most. And a bit, little bit of a skid here, but everyone knows I love that Detroit as dogs, and they failed me last week. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to bet them as dogs. So I'm going to say Detroit plus three and a half. They keep it a close game. Elliot, who you got? I'm doing. I'm going Miami, but I'm buying it down. The same thing, down to two. And okay. Three. All right. You I should have told me down. coming in that we could just buy down. You can't. We That's you can't. I'm 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 down. Down. Let me I'm buy saying, down I'm all of my picks. I'm gonna buy it down. I'd like to tease. I'll, let's just do a teaser. Let's just do a teaser. <laughs> Um, so I like Miami, but I'm actually gonna buy ten points on it. Say them <laughs> plus, plus seven. Plus seven and a half. Is that good? You need to go. Okay. Go, go pick. If you got that money, Rick, just buy it down. <laughs> just buy it down. When One got, thing I've never hey, been accused of is having that money, down. brother. Johnny, who you got? I got uh, Miami minus three. All right, he's got to turn the lights on. Detroit. So you're the only one on Detroit. You're not on Detroit. No. Me, absolutely not. Not this week. So. Um, I, I wanted to get a parlay with you guys. I that's what we were I'm trying for. so hard. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. I think we might be able to get oh, it. Actually, what you didn't know is you invited me on. We all made a separate group chat. We said, let's just make your life as hard as possible. Fuck Mikey. He's such it's a hard with five people to get five six picks. Yeah, it's I mean, true. We watch on Sunday. Hey, so five you know. ball knowers. Five yeah. ball knowers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, five ball. People don't know ball probably. Make parlay so easy. But no, absolutely. This is an interesting one. When you get into the new ball. Yeah. I think I love this game. Pittsburgh at Philly, minus 10 and a half. It's Pittsburgh plus 10 and a half, right? It's got to be. If it's, it's Mitch, gotta is it Mitch or Pickett? If it's Mitch, I'll, I'll If it's Mitch, I'm riding 10 and a half. Yeah, I'm riding 10 and a half. I mean, Mitch is a leader of men at the end of the day. Yeah, Philly, coming off, Philly coming off a bye. That Philly hype has just got to slow down at some point. I, I think – Like, I, I'm rooting for the Eagles. I think they're a great team. But, like, are, are they this good? Tom is the leader of um, Are they? Uh, ten and a half points is a lot of points. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. Did you know who else got ten and a half points, points against them? Uh, the, Buccaneers. the Buccaneers. Also, do you know how good Mike Tomlin is against the spread? Tomlin. I don't have the exact stat, but it's as a dog. As good. a dog, he's, he's in that out of the Not to mention, it's not like a primetime game. No. And Philly might be at home, but they're not all like – Jacked up, ready to go on this game. game. The Phillies World Series is happening at the same time. They're probably watching that. They're probably drinking to enjoy the rest of the city. A- anybody see uh, Silver This Lines is a new game. game. Silver Linings Playbook. You see it? Ever see it? Ever Jennifer see it? Lawrence? Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah. Yeah. You guys remember that? It was like an 11 o'clock uh, tailgate. Yeah. Still got a little rowdy. Yeah, what's your point? Nothing special. What's your point? My point is, is they're not going to show up for this game. As big as they would Steelers as Steelers plus ten and a half. Steelers plus ten and a half. But the Steelers are going to show up because this is the Steelers Super Bowl problem. Right. So I'm taking Steelers plus ten and a half. Give me Steelers ten and a half. I hate it, but I'm riding with it. Look at those hands. So we have okay. across the board. L, who you got? Same thing. All right, Johnny oh, T. Friend of the pod parlay. Is it going in? Or we just have one straight minute? I'm going three terrible towels. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Shout out to Noble, you fuck. Yes, yeah, Steelers. My mom beat me up last, the last tell, couple weeks. Tell him he said, tell him he's a Steelers fuck. plus ten and a half. Hey, Mikey. Hey, go Steelers. From October 6th. Yeah. Steelers is an underdog against the spread. Mike Tomlin is 44 and 25 and three. That's amazing. It's good. It's amazing. It's good numbers. It's huge numbers. It's good numbers. So I'll probably, yeah, let's, I'm riding with it. Fuck yep. it. All right. And I hate it. I hate it. So <laughs> we're doing it. Next game, game of the week, game of the year, game of the lifetime, best wow. game of all time. Game of the lifetime. Uh, the line is minus nine. This is in so, at and Stadium. Nine. So Cowboys minus nine, did Vegas just – I'm sitting nine and a half right now. Nobody in Vegas saw my, the, the they Monday Night Football. They didn't care. They no, don't respect Vegas. Chicago. Where they don't I? care about the Bears. Where when are they going to respect us? They don't respect us. When are they going to respect Justin Fields? They don't Justin respect Fields. Justin Am Fields. I the only one on the planet that respects Justin no. Fields? Well, so, he doesn't first like. of all, guys, you guys got to fucking understand. Mm-hmm. If you look at the way the Chicago yeah. offensive line plays against the – the Dallas defensive line. Mike, is that what you just said? Or no? No, 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 no. You brought that yeah, up. Kind of the Dallas defensive line against the, the, uh, the Bears offensive, the Bears offensive line. line. Okay. Johnny, change that, that to nine and a half. That People being said, nine that being said, I'm going to take well, the Bears plus nine and a half. Right? So you're going to take the Bears plus nine and a half. Yes. All right. Wait, you're a Cowboys fan, right? Yeah. Absolutely. 
The Cowboys, so, yeah, set the, the Cowboys will win. The Cowboys will win. Let me set the example for you, Mr. Buy points over here. I'm going to sell points. Give me the Bears all the way up to three and a half. Give me the Bears. Bears three and a half. No, money line. Money line. Money line. Money line. Bears money line. Bears, 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 no. Bears money line. If you're not taking I want the Bears. Minus three, three and a half. Minus three and a half. Hammering. All right. We are fortunate. You can keep buying your points. I'm going to sell them. You can keep them. Here, Vegas. Here's my points. Here's the points. Here they are. All right. So we're I, You can have them. I don't care. Bears minus three. Let's, <laughs> let's say minus three. Bears minus three and plus 418. Plus 418? Hammer it. Hammer it? Hammer it. I'm going to cover those bets. Uh, no, no, I got it. I'll use, I'll use sports book right here. Cover those bets. I'll use betonline.ag. Shout out betonline.ag. Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but it, realistically, I will take the Bears plus nine and a half here. I think everybody's taking the Bears plus nine and a half, right? Oh, no. The Cowboys will smoke them. I think I honestly think the Cowboys will smoke You're a piece of shit. You're, no, you're a piece no, of shit. No, no. Bears plus nine and a half. Bears all right. money line. All right, beautiful. All right, Johnny? Yeah. All right, all right. And Bears plus nine. We got, we got two in the parlay. So right. We're going to win by and 10, bro. If like, Cooper Rush is the starting quarterback, I feel differently. Yes. But Dak Prescott... Welcome to Roquan Smith's nuts on your yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to be Fuck you. Out honest and uh, up front with you guys. I genuinely think the Bears are going to get destroyed in this game. Yeah. Why? So, uh, why? I no, so, so, so do I, but uh, I think I think it's, 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 one, it's uh, maybe it's just because I'm a Chicago sports fan, but I just had a happy moment with the, yeah. with the Bears. I'm, and there's no way that they're going to make me happy two, two days in a row. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Some thoughts are better kept to yourself. No. <laughs> we don't need those vibes. Definitely. We don't need them. I am. My vibes are good. We don't need the negativity, brother. And we don't need bears, them. bears, 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 bears. Bears are back. You're a mess. No, sorry. You're sorry. you're a mess. Bears are back, though. What's up? And and here's the thing. Here's here's the thing too with the bears is we just talked about how every single team this was their Super Bowl. This was their Super Bowl. Now they're gonna have a shitty week. I should be saying the same thing about the Bears, where the that's Bears true. versus the Patriots, that was their Super Bowl to win. Yeah. I, and now this week's such a lot. If you want Mike McCarthy to strike fear into my heart, he's not going to. No. It's a short week. It's such a letdown spot for the Bears. I, I know it. I love this. I love it. It was the horniest I've ever been watching a football game on Monday night. Uh-huh. But this oh. is, this <laughs> is <laughs> such, What the fuck was that? This is such a letdown spot. Okay. Such a letdown spot. And you know, deep I'm, your heart. I'm, I'm like the captain of the Titanic. If I have to go down with my ship, then so exactly. exactly. And I'm the guy, oh God, the guy playing the violin. the violin right now. <laughs> and I'm going, you know what? You're it was right. a pleasure what we did last week. And now I'm going to drown. <laughs> I'm going to fucking drown. All right, let's take it. Uh, <laughs> but Bears lost that in a half, baby. Put a thousand Good teams on the great teams cover. Yeah. If you want a big car and a big boat, put the dollar on the money line. You yeah. fucking losers. I'm losers. I, I, I'm 06 and 1. He's so. 06 and 1 again. You should do a shot sandwich tonight. I'm just saying. I did drive oh, you got to drive it right. Never mind. I one, did one, two, I did one on Saturday. Oh, oh, how many did you owe? He was like four? No, I did one on Saturday. I'm, I'm 6 0 oh, 1 against the guy. I've done, I've done four now. So, you owe two. I owe two. Because we had a preseason game. We had a preseason game. Correct. Right. Yeah. All right. Next up, guys, we have the Jets uh, at home versus the New England Patriots. Minus two and a half favorites for the New England Patriots. On the road, Jets have been playing lights out. Wait, wait. Who's, who's favorite in this game? Yep. New England. Minus two and a half. Why? Jets money line. Why? Yeah. This is a bounce back spot for the Patriots, but I love this Jets. Jet. Yeah, they, they, this Jets they, they team. Sauce, Sauce Gardner is going to go down as one of the best corners. He's of all great. Keep, he's keep so giving good. that like you're. So good. Keep so giving good. them a reason to have this chip on their shoulder. Yeah. because they they are playing lights out. Take a receipt. So 100%. 100%. <laughs> all right, three, two, one. Okay, uh, so our next game, uh, we have. Tennessee at Houston, another stinky game. These are the three twenty-five games. Tennessee is a minus two favorite. Just two. Yeah. I kind of love Houston. Mm. Don't tell me. That. This is a if you're a Davis Mills guy, this is a gut check game for you. 
Okay. Home dogs plus two against a game you probably, for some reason, shouldn't be plus two in. This this feels like it should be like Tennessee five and a half. But you're right. For me, it does feel like a minus. This, like and I'm I'm loving Tennessee, and that, that's why I'm self fading myself and going with the Texans because why is this line only two points? Well, also Derek Henry usually has a tough game against Houston when he nope. does play Houston. Nope. Yeah. What was the game log? Let me tell you, his last three games against Houston. 34 carries for 250 yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> Love it. 22 carries for 212 yards. You know two what? Touchdowns. Over 100. Love it. Keep going. Keep carries, going. 32 carries for 211 yards and three touchdowns. Let's go. Okay, oh, I love that. Before that, before that, before before that, that I love it. He has three straight 200 yards. <laughs> <against you. laughs> Never no, mind. I love it. Never mind. I'm doing. Tennessee minus time two. Out, time out. You said the last three games, and then you said 34 carries for 280 yards. Well, I thought that years. was the total. Hey. I am turning. Hey, the one's hey. Red. hey I stop. Red the first goal. What about at off. Houston? At Houston. Uh, so at Houston, 34 carries for 250 yards. Two I'm over here thinking, oh, 80 yards at for Houston, game. At Houston, 32 carries, 211 hey, yards, three touchdowns. This is in Houston. And then uh, he had a couple stinkers, but it looks like he might be out hurt for some of them, like three carries, six carries. I thought you okay, were telling me that it was. The yeah, AFC eight, South have problems six. at yeah, Houston sometimes, like the Colts yeah. and the Colts. Colts it's up. tricky fucking games to bet these games. At these Houston, games. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hammer. Houston it at home, I gotta, they're playing I mean, tough. I was, but then it's, yeah, it's you gotta hammer. I don't fuck now with you're scared. I don't fuck with this game. No, I think Tennessee should win, no problem, but. In 10 games against the Houston Texans in his career, he has 170 carries for 1,035 yards and nine touchdowns. But I think your point, whether they're playing at home or away, is a big thing. Because I'm, dude, I'm in a survivor pool right now. Two, there's 51 entrants left. Winner takes 49K. And I told my buddy, because I'm splitting it with him, I want to take Tennessee at Houston. And he doesn't want to. So the fact that you asked that question of whether or not he's having those games at home or away, that's a big thing. Yeah, but yeah, but, but the, at home the away, he's the, those games. The, the away games. The away games. He's playing away. He's playing and Houston. away. He's playing big. In in Houston, yeah, so he's, he saying, he's feeling more confident. Thirty-four carries for two hundred fifty yards. Yeah, and it's at two carries for two hundred eleven yards. All right, with I, three touchdowns and two touchdowns. I like Tennessee. That I mean, but you also said he had a couple stickers. Over but 40, that's over 40, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, I haven't looked at the last three years. He's getting old, four, man. four years ago. He's yeah, and old. he's getting better. He just put up 128 <laughs> last week. His last, his last I game. I still like Tennessee, four, but this, this is a reality Over 40 right and a half. For who? Over under. Oh, I think you meant rushing yards. I was like, what the fuck? So take the I'm about to put my mortgage on that. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm going to go to Tennessee here. I was on Tennessee last week, too. Love Tennessee. My lock of the week was Derek Henry's over on rushing yards, which I texted to you. Yeah. Um, that hit by a long shot. My lock. I texted no, you. I texted to you. No, no, no. You said oh, you I said told you that was my lock. What I'm hearing is nobody posted it. So you both, I, I posted you both can be bullshit. Hey, you gotta pay. You gotta pay for those picks. Yeah, yeah. Picks, picks. Oh, you're you're the premium server. Premium, premium, premium picks. picks. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was fucking with the big dogs. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna double down on this and go Tennessee, and then lock of the week is Derrick Henry's over on okay. rushing yards. If Derrick Henry's rushing yard over total is 150, I'm gonna take the over 170. Okay, I I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna, wait, did you pull up that line? Or no, 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 I'm saying I, I don't think it's up yet. I don't know. Check it. Check it. So. If it's up, then I'm gonna am gonna look at the bars <laughs> right now. Yeah, that, I love that app. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna use bet online. So. You no, you're right. Not up yet. Not up yet. I wish I could take a video of that. Also, I just want to <laughs> say, in the one game where Derrick Henry had 212 rushing yards, he also had 52 receiving yards. That's huge because he doesn't really have a lot of receiving no. yards. No, yeah. he's just he's and his his receiving yard over under is usually like like seven. Yeah, eight, you know. So, all right. So I'm gonna take Tennessee minus two. Tennessee, Houston. Wow. Okay. Houston no. purely because I love Tennessee too much, and I'm thinking this is a fade the public. Fade, 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 fade myself and fade the public because I know the public is all over. Here. Understandable. That's the thing that scares me. And on the reverse, I'll segue us for you, Mikey. I'm taking the Giants. I know the public's going to be all over the Giants. The five and one New York Giants. The Brian Dabble led New York Giants, who the Chicago Bears should have hired. Yeah, I you. Yeah, there's a I lot love Eberflus, but I was banging the drum for Dabble all offseason. Oh, nice. I've been to have him on. Oh my God! Can you imagine? He's doing it with a bozo like Daniel Jones. Can you imagine what he would do with Justin Fields? But I digress. 
This is going to be a rat line. This is going to be a line the public's all over the New York football giants. I don't care. This is another pick just like Baltimore. I'm willing to go down with the ship on. If loving the giants this week is wrong, I don't want to be right. I'm going, I'm going with the New York football. Giants. Why is Seattle minus three? Eight? Right? Yeah. It makes no sense. It's yeah. Oh, 12 guy. 12 man. Right. That's stupid. I, I really puts up one. They just dismantled the Chargers. They did just dismantle the Chargers, but I don't think the Chargers are in the right, in the same exact fucking mode as the Giants are. The Giants actually have pieces together and chemistry together. The Chargers, they just put out Keenan uh, Allen injured because they're so desperate to win a game, which they lost, so it was basically a waste anyways. He wasn't ready to come back. He still got two catches. And then what? They're going to – They I think they only played him for the first half and then benched him, got or getting him ready for after the bye week. So Chargers aren't ready right now. Look for two, three weeks. The Chargers are going to get ready. I might place a little futures bet now at plus 3,000 for the Chargers to win the Super Bowl just so they can make it to the playoffs and start cashing out on that. Wait, how did the Chargers get brought up? Because uh, oh, they, 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 no, no, no. The Seahawks just dismantled the Chargers last week. Right, right, right. Right. Now, I'm still going to go ahead and take the Giants on this game. I know the public's going to be all over this game as well, but I do like Dabble. I do think he's going to – I mean, everybody likes Carroll, too, but I do like Dabble. I do like the energy that they're going into, and I like how they find way, ways to win the game in the fourth you, quarter. You, yeah, Giants. Exactly what I was about to bring up, the way they find a way to win games. They yeah. know they have a talent deficit. Yeah. Brian Dabble knows that. The way they play football, they utilize Daniel Jones' legs, they run the shit out of the football, and they just say, if we can hang around games until the fourth quarter – you're going to make a mistake, and we're going to capitalize on it. That's how they upset the Ravens. That's how they upset the Packers. And they just hang around, and they hang around. And in the fourth quarter, they wait for you to fumble. They wait for you to make a costly mistake, and they take advantage of it. So I think at the worst-case scenario, Seattle beats them on a last-minute field goal. I don't see a world where they come in and beat the brakes off them and cover the spread overwhelmingly. I want to know what the Giants are against the spread this week. Yeah. So. You're taking Seattle plus minus. Three. I saw the look in Mike's eyes too. I'm, I'm right there with yeah. Seattle yeah, minus. I saw when I was when I was giving my little spiel there. I could see that's him. What, that's what this guy does. Blush. You give out logic, and he goes. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I got a, I got a Jersey Jerry thing going right now with the signs. Okay. I was with my auntie Carol this weekend. Auntie <laughs> Carol, Pete Carol, my auntie Carol. She forgot to wish me a happy birthday. When was your birthday? On Thursday. Oh, Thursday. happy Thursday. belated birthday. So you forgot to. So. Well, I didn't know him She's, on that Thursday, so I think that's... You don't even know you. If you don't wish me happy birthday next year, I'm going to be so mad. Thursday. It's on you. October 20th. October 20th. It's okay. on you. Put it in your calendar. It's on you now. I don't know you. <laughs> I do that now. I do that. I'm going to put it in my calendar. That's an adult thing to do. So my Auntie Carol said, I won't forget again. And I said, good, because I've never forgotten your birthday. When's Andy Carroll's birthday right now? No idea, but it's yeah. in my calendar. No. But it's in my calendar. So you did forget, but your phone did. My phone doesn't. I'll draw the line. Continue. Yep. I won't forget Carol. Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll minus three. That's the one. You can't argue with that. That's logic. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Now, can you use that logic or what's what's your logic out? Um, um I just had a so, I just had a look from Mike. Plus, I mean Dude, do you look at the Giants and the Bears? In my opinion, it's like the exact opposite here, play. Here we go. Exact opposite play. I always say when I'm watching the Bears, dude, fucking Justin Fields just need to throw the ball. It's all about the attempts. The Giants, fucking Daniel Jones just need to run the ball. He had 11 attempts last week. They just need to stop the run. That's all they need to do. Force the Giants to throw the ball. The Seahawks defense, dude, they're fucking animals. They get to the ball, they run, they make plays. And Geno Smith is no joke. They're going to put up points. The Giants can't put up points like the Seahawks can. Dude, minus three. I feel like that's a lock, especially at home. I don't. With the 12th like, man. The, the Giants are 3 0 on the road. Doesn't matter. Let me. And let, they've I beaten don't, the Jaguars, the Packers, and the Titans. Let me get this. But you. The, exactly. What you, you say, say? You say the Giants look has to run out at some point. My counter, my counter would be. I didn't say that. But no, that's what you say. I didn't say that. But that's what you're saying, though, when you say they've won all these games on the road. They're three and zero on the road. You're saying eventually they're looking. No, I'm saying it's scary. Okay, I'm afraid of that. It's not even on the road. It's it's in the top one besides Arrowhead, one of the toughest. I am. I don't like this game. I will not be betting it if I have gone to my. I'm taking Giants money. Yeah, sure. Here we go. 
I got a little couple stats I got to read for you guys. So after a loss, uh, Giants are one and zero against the spread. Who cares? As an away team, though, they're two and zero against the spread. Mm. As an underdog, one. they're five and zero against the spread. They're six and one this year against the spread. Yeah. No, as I said, as an away team, they're two and zero. I'm just saying overall, they're six and one. I know I was gonna, I was gonna build it up, but <laughs> six and one against the spread. You build it up when Thanks, it's like week John. twelve. I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think this game is a question of I think this game is a question of who's going to come back to planet Earth first, the Giants as a whole or Geno Smith playing out of his mind? Because both of them are playing out of their minds. Geno Smith might who who is the least fraudulent of the teams that are playing out? Of their I just minds don't right like. At what point? Down. At what point would it take you to say Geno Smith is good? I got to see it for a full year. No, yeah, you you got to so seven. Gino get, Smith, it's got to be more than Gino seven Smith games. Finishes the year. With 35 touchdowns, six interceptions, and leads the team to a uh, to the playoffs. I hope he doesn't because the yeah. Bears will sign him. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I hope they don't. I hope he's not that. No, good. you know who the is? The Indianapolis Colts. Oh, they might. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Geno Smith, welcome to the club as the next yeah. quarterback that could maybe do something. Geno hey, Smith is one. We're talking to the first top. place. In the AFC West with the Rams, 49ers, and Cardinals. It's, it's Seattle insane. Seahawks. Insane that they're in first Crazy. place. If you would have told me how old is week one that Crazy. those guys were in first, I would have never They're the plainest in New York Giants yeah. who have won every single game by less than yeah. one possession. 31. The entire season. A hundred person poll. No one would pick Seattle to be in first place after yeah, that. Said it. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you're, well, yeah, you're fine. You got it. All right. All right, so uh, I said Giants, you said Seahawks, Seahawks, Giants. Johnny, you said what? It's not going to parlay. Right? I, know, I just want to hear. I'll go Giants plus three. You didn't ask me last game. I'll go with Tennessee plus two, but I like Kevin's idea. I, with, uh, Tennessee minus two. I got written down. I'm going to win this week. All right, so you got Tennessee <laughs> minus two. One of these weeks, we're going to win. Uh, all it's right, a war so of attrition. Next game, we got the San Francisco 49ers going to the LA Rams. San Francisco is a minus one favorite. I am going to annihilate my hammer like Thor and hammer San Francisco 49ers. Yes. 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 Oh, my the, Rams, the Rams are the losers when it comes to the 49ers. Sean, or what's his name? What's, what's the guy's name? What's his name? Come on. Tell me. I forget his fucking name every single time because he's a loser. Not Sean Payton. Who's it? Uh, Shanahan. Uh, no, thank you. Sean McVay. Sean, Sean, Sean McVay. Uh, dude, I, every That's single time, time I always lose this okay. guy's fucking okay. name. What's the Niners coach? Uh, Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, easy. He See, owns. I remember that. That's easy. He owns. He owns Sean McVay. He's a fucking loser when it comes to it. I, I, I think I bet on this game five years in a row, and it's hit. The record's I impossible. I know the record. I had a conversation with uh, some people in Philly. 49ers. He's got his number. He's got and, his number. Uh, I asked him after the win last time San Francisco beat him this year at home. I said, are you going to be taking your San Fran again? And I'm going the Rams this game. And I am a 49ers. I am a Jimmy Garoppolo fan. Uh, I'm going with the Rams. And I know Bro. the record. I know the history with San Fran, but they got to – this is a – they got to fucking they beat gotta, them. right? They got to do it this one. This but they don't, this, except right. in the playoffs. Joey, Joey. Johnny. 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 There you go. Oh, Jesus. You're all good, brother. Uh, you're going to go Rams, too? I, I hate it. <laughs> hey, we well, got most of the plays. If you want a Jimmy Garoppolo stat, you look up his stats <laughs> against the Rams. Jimmy Jimmy balls out against the Rams. And he does. He, he doesn't ball out much. He, you know, he's just a uh, get you by quarterback. Thank you but, for getting about one. Person. What Debo? Oh my God! And they got CMC now. See a full dose of CMC. I'm going. God, dude, I love the Niners, man. And Niners alternate spread. I got side man. pictures of Garoppolo in my room. Oh, oh yeah, you got to sell them. You can keep them. You can keep them. Hey, you lose me only one point. That's not enough. I'll keep them. Four and a half, please. That's keep not them. enough. Uh, all right, and that's and that's also my reason is you got these two guys in the slot. Sean McVay. He's, he's been no idea he, how to when, cover these two against dude, the slot. It's going to be so unique. He has no film on these guys. Whatever the film he used to watch was last week. Shit, and that's no. Give me the face. He found man. out that he got. I'm going to San Fran. He you. was in his bedroom looking at his playbook, jerking off. Oh, like that? Like this. His Is that how you do it? Yeah, you can see by his hands. Is that how I do it? Yeah. 
just kind of rub up against something and just hop up and down. Yeah. I used to do that in like fifth grade. I used to on my fridge. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> shout out um, the fridge. Shout out the fridge. <laughs> All right, I got 49ers minus one. 49ers minus one. Not enough points. So, so these, these team. That's a whole separate issue to unpack there, Mikey. <laughs> All right, for sure. Uh, these teams played earlier in the year, did they not? Yes. It was yeah. around Niners. even money, around an even matchup, what if I recall correctly. Yeah. yeah. So I took the, it was like week two or three. I think it was two. Two? two? Yeah. I, I thought so as well. I took the Rams that week thinking, oh my God, this is a Super Bowl team. I did also. So how am I, how am I fading? How am I taking, how am I not taking the Super Bowl team against Jimmy Garoppolo? <laughs> And then in the first quarter, they started Easy. showing all those stats about how Shanahan owns McVay. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're in trouble. And yeah. you know what? We were in trouble. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same result. Fuck that shit. Buy me a hammer because I'm putting it on the San Francisco 49ers. I'm right there with you, Mike. You call me for the way I'm grabbing this hammer and putting it all. Bang! 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 All the nice Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G, the sex god, Christian McCaffrey. That's how a white man runs the football. I wish we could put this in the front of the pod for a You know what? We can. We can. No, we can't. 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 No, we can't. Unless you want to buy a point. Okay, all right, no, my point. Well, Keep the right. points. Okay. Next game we got, we have, wait, do we really only have two teams this far? Oh, you got Rams? That's crazy. Yeah. Rams. You're, you're on the Rams. Oh, yeah. I like no it. Doubt. I like right. it, man. You're coming off a bye week? I like it. Come on. Next game we got Washington, uh, the Commanders. I have some thoughts here. Going to the one and only Indianapolis Colts. Sam Ellinger. Indianapolis Colts. Yep. Minus three. Backup's the starter. Matt Ryan stinks. He's benched. White boy Rick just let out a clout. Mm. What does it say? You want me to lead off? Because I have some yeah, very clout. Read the clout. Right. We can blow another one. Right. Oh, oh shit. Two of the same time. Colts minus three. Colts minus three. Oh. Colts minus three. As Colts the resident three. Indianapolis Colts insider here. Can't Sam be. Ellinger is the future. Is he really? Sam Ellinger is the present. He's the future. He's the guy. I'm not kidding you. I even watched the Colts preseason games. He's that good. He's got the it factor. Really? He does. He doesn't have the arm strength. He's not a guy who's like Patrick Mahomes who's going to go out there and fucking make all the crazy throws. But the locker room loves him. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got the swagger you want from a QB1. I am the founder, the creator, the conductor of the Sam Ellinger train. This guy is going to go out there. He's been waiting. He's done everything possible to deserve a shot. He's finally getting his shot. He's prepared. He's getting coached up by two veteran pros in the locker room and Matt Ryan and Nick Foles, two consummate pros. Matt Ryan handled it better than you could have ever expected for a guy to get benched. Yeah. I, 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 I cannot I go tell you. you how much I love the I gotta go with you. They're going to be playing more to their strengths. They're going to be running Jonathan Taylor a little more. They're going to be utilizing more, maybe some design runs for Ellinger, maybe some definitely more bootlegs, naked action, that type of thing, utilizing, you know, his legs behind an offensive line that has been suspect all year, putting it generously, mm -hmm. putting it truthfully, they flat out stink. Ellinger's athleticism, Ellinger's just general approach to the game, it gives them the advantage. Not to mention the owner beef we got coming to town. Uh -huh. Jim Ursay said, yes. let's get this Bozo Snyder up on out yep. of here. Jim Ursay is the one, the reports are coming in. He made the call to make the switch to Ellinger. This is an Ursa game. This is an owner putting his pride, putting his nuts themselves on the table mm -hmm. and saying, this guy's a bozo. Not only am I a better owner than you, I have a better football team that I own than you. Yeah. This is personal for Jim Ursa. That's why I think the Colts at Lucas Oil Stadium go out there and blow the doors off the commander. He's such a Colts, such a Colts fan. Absolutely I not. am riding with the Colts as well. Absolutely this game minus three. This, they have to win. They have to win. It's a season defining game it, at it, three, it three, and one. This is your team. I mean, this is also a season game for season defining game for the commanders too. They got tapped. Yeah, uh, they're not as good. Like the Colts had a 
actual like hopes coming into the season then they have an actual talented roster like this is like the Colts need to win the commanders more so can take a year off Matt Ryan also not a Colts fan let's let's address that right, right yeah now. Mikey's not a Packers fan oh, I look like <laughs> I, Ryan, Matt I Ryan. lost the Colts so I'm inclined to believe in them Matt Ryan being replaced by Sam Ellinger Matt Ryan's first start as a rookie is it what fair enough he won 34-21. Blew out the Detroit Lions. Okay. <laughs> Being replaced by Sam Ellinger. Sam Ellinger's first start in the NFL. Are you sniffing out Michael Pittman many times that's on score? Who's Sam Ellinger. Football. I'm telling you. Colts this kid's three. got it. Colts minus three. I have to take it. Colts minus three. I'm telling you. It's an ugly Colts game, three. and I'm also not going to touch no. it. Though. I'm Colts minus three. Not based on anything Rick just said, but based Jonathan on the fact Taylor that healthy. I went and I saw the Cowboys <laughs> the year they led the NFL in scoring go to Indianapolis and get shut out. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Two of the most, two of the biggest home field advantages in the NFL, like yeah. I said, Minnesota and Indianapolis. And that's yeah. Yeah. Now put it. Now put it. Kansas City. Yeah. 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 No, Minnesota yeah. and Indianapolis. I'm telling you right no, now. I will, those two. Lucas Oil is a sick atmosphere because there's nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's honestly one of the greatest stadiums outside of Lambo. Yeah, I've right. been to. Don't know. I go to an away game every single year. I'll be in Tennessee this year to see the Cowboys play. Oh, oh yeah. Guaranteed. That's a sick stadium because it's right in like downtown. Oh, Nashville. I've been to Hampton like, Social. Could, I've been to Hampton Social and Tennessee. Two birds and one stone. Yeah. But no, I like Indy minus three. One of the greatest home field advantages you can New have. New stadium coming. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I saw that. I mean, it and it looks sick. There. Super Biggest Bowl in Nashville? Bowl. Those two worlds are Oh, my ready. God. Those two worlds Shout are out to Porter ready. Pike, 2024, we're coming to Nashville. Shout We're in Indianapolis now. Oh, yeah. Also, shout hey, out to Porter Pike. Indianapolis is a great garbage. city. I will say to rep Indiana, Indianapolis is a great city. Huh. It's a great host city. That's why they have everything there. Milwaukee oh. or, or Indiana. Indianapolis, no question. No. Oh, I thought you were talking about the Milwaukee's. guys up here. You guys want to know the You ever place? been to the Indy 500? You ever been to the you Pottawatomie? Been a, you ever been to the Little 500? I'm going, I'm going next yeah. year. Brother. To, to the Indy. <laughs> little five. Brother. Come, you said Little 500, and I got like Vietnam War flashbacks that trigger that. What is uh? What is that? That's like the. Uh, that's, that's for the next podcast. Indiana. That's for the next podcast. What's on the board? I'll give, a, brief, I'll give, a, I'll give a I'll give a one sentence right okay. now. So. <laughs> Midgets. You know, it's <laughs> every year there's a bike race in Indiana. It's, it's like a big it's, thing. It's like a U of I's uh, unofficial weekend. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. That's in Indiana's party. Weekend. It's every weekend there's like a bike race that we take super seriously. Like every sorority and frat has a bike team okay. that trains all year. But what it's really about is the whole week leading up to it. You just have a party every night and the bars are open every night. So it's just a week of partying. In this oh, party. that's cool. All right. five. We're on the uh, five. If you Google, I shit you not. Google right now, greatest college weekend in America. So the first five result five. is Little 500. I, I love it. I know it. I love it. Shout out Little 500. All right. So nice Shout out Indiana University. Go Hoosers. Wait, are we all Big 10 champions, are we all 2023, 2023 national champions, the Indiana Hoosers. Colt minus three is going to the Brendan Pop probably, too. Yeah. So that's three. Ellinger. We're an Ellinger hey. podcast. I hey, love that. That Heineke. He's I appreciate player, it, man. Brothers. It's rock. The quarterback in Washington, he should have been the starter since the beginning. Since the beginning, I like Taylor Heineke. Heineke. Yeah, what else could you ask for? He's him? way better he's, than Wentz. He's uh, and with him in the game, the Terry McLaurin fucking prop bets through the roof. And they're two, they're two very similar Anytime quarterbacks. Score, easy last year. Heineke and Ellinger are like two very similar quarterbacks. Like they're not, Price. they're not jumping off the, the athleticism charts, but it's like I think it's they've done everything you asked. 24, 21 Colts. All right, next game we got is uh, Packers at Buffalo. Buffalo is a minus 11 point favorite at home. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to get murdered. I hope. I hope. I mean, dude, have you ever in your entire life seen the Packers? I've never dogs. seen a double digit dog. Plus 11. And that's why I feel like I need to take them. No. Who? Packers? Yeah, I know. You want me to leave? Like, no, I, you're right. I no. hate Aaron Rodgers and I love I, Josh Allen and the Bills, but how do you not take Aaron Rodgers as a double I already know. Before He's I the boogeyman. We respect him more than anybody. Before I saw the spread, before I saw who was playing, I already know who was going to be on the And I'm on Buffalo minus eight. No, I'm, you know what? I Because this is the logic I used like three weeks ago with the Tennessee Titans. I was like, there's no way that Mike Rabel is going to go on 
Sunday night football and get blown out by the Bills. There's no chance that's happening. You know, Mike Vrabel is a good coach. He always like does it right on prime time. He never loses on prime time. They got smoked 41 to like 17. Yeah. Okay. This game, I have been saying for three weeks that this is a get right game for Aaron Rodgers. This is a get right game. This is when they're going to turn around. They are going to get fucking murdered. I have the Bills minus 11. I never take points more than 10. This game, I'm taking it. I have to take it. Uh, so are you saying that's Mikey Belize? We're about to see Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady <laughs> two straight games? Yeah. Yep, hundred percent. Two straight games are gonna be. Able to uh, no, no, I, I have, I have bucks. You have, you have bucks. Yeah, I have bucks winning this game. Might be end of an era for us, man. It's this week. Well, they. This is gonna be three games in a row for Aaron Rodgers. Four yeah. games in a row. Good. That means Justin Fields Brayden. can finally start his reign. Are we gonna? We're gonna buy this week. No, we got Cowboys. I'm gonna Cowboys. Essentially a buy because uh, yeah. you're at home against Washington, man. Yeah, right. You're at home against Washington. Fuck off. All right, Buffalo uh, minus eleven. Who you got? No, we got. I'm going Green Bay. I mean, you look at it's Buffalo. They're playing. It's a lot of points. Yeah, eleven, dude. They're getting eleven points plus Aaron Buffalo. Rogers they're rushing four up front, and they're playing that zone defense. That's what Aaron Rodgers sits back on. He's just sitting back looking for people to pick up fire. <laughs> so I'm going Green Bay. But honestly, I'm looking at the Green Bay, Chicago, Pittsburgh teaser. That's the way to play it. Buy seven points, throw a shitload of money at it. I'm going to guarantee that hits. So you're buying some more points. Yeah, you're buying more points. You are not beating the buying points. Out like 14 and a half I, 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 I used it. I'm guilty as charged. I'll buy points. <laughs> he buys, all day long. buying I'll points is a prime send him to Guantanamo. All with, day long. I'm with buying points. But I'm taking days. Green Bay with the 11, especially with the defense Buffalo plays. I'll take them all day. Only thing I'm buying here is a yacht after Buffalo wins by fucking uh, 50 points. Okay. Yeah, me too. Let's buy a yacht together. We'll buy a yacht? Yeah, after we'll finance it. Uh, oh, we're like, gonna, we're gonna yeah, have to buy. Yeah, it's not gonna make sense. Not gonna win that much money. All right, all right. Next game is the Monday night game. This is the last game of the week. Uh, Cincy is minus three and a half. They are going to Cleveland. Uh, rivalries. Can you not say that? Who you guys got? I'm not going first. I, hate I think Vegas. the Bengals this got is, their swagger back. This is, I hate that hook on the three points. This is yeah. this is when I hate Vegas. It's right. Like this this line is so scary. To me. If it's Bengals two and a half, I'm hammering that. No, that yeah. hey, guess what I'm gonna do? Guess what I'm gonna do? You're gonna be Bengals. Let, Let us know. Let us. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Buying no. points out. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to buy it down to two and a half. Oh my oh, god! god. So, all so it, it, I want to see this in the perfect world. This is Elliot is uh, taking Cincy minus two and a half. Miami um, minus two and a half. Miami minus two and a half. Minnesota minus two and a half. Minnesota. Yeah. So it's gonna be a good problem. It'll be a good time. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with buying points. It's it's I, cowardly. Uh, it's cowardly at, at your core. Hey, you're buying points the wrong way. You gotta buy points the other way. Since hey, he did, since Rick he lost his over tonight. Right. I won my over tonight. That's I, why. I, yeah, I understand. Sometimes you gotta make decisions okay. to win money. I'm about to say, Rick. Rick probably hope he bought. There down. was just no reason. He brought no it reason back back back. Why did he bring up that? It was an hour. Hey, he no, called me cowardly. True. He called me cowardly. That's true. He said he's cowardly. You know why he's cowardly though? There is courage. He knew it's cowardly, but. He well, also solved a lot of problems. I'm dead and buried. My tombstone is erected, and you are sitting there dancing on my grave at that. Yeah, that's fucked up. I would, that's, never, I would never. Yeah, I would never I thought, go to Indiana either. Get it? Because you'd be buried. You in probably Indiana. couldn't get it. The ghost. <laughs> you definitely. You probably, where'd you go to school? Oh, I, I meant like the state. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. I, dude, you're talking about me talking about ACT. I got a 27 on my ACT. Yeah, I can't complain. Uh, yeah, you did not, not get into college stuff, no. What did no. you get on your ACT? What were you in that city? He went to business school in Indiana. What did he get? I don't know. 36? 33. I know you did that. Yeah. 34 That's is fucking right? insane. Isn't 34 perfect? I think it's 36. No, 36. 36 is perfect. I got a 36 on the reading in English. I didn't oh, miss a God. question on those two. Science is hard. And here you are. So yeah, you should take here all my are. you should take all my picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, here I am. I'm recording a podcast. <laughs> you How many times you take it? Did a lot with it. You're drinking a crown royal app. How many times you take it? That's that's royalty right there. How many times you take it? You are the king. Twice. <laughs> I took first three. try got a 30, second try got a 33. You know what's funny is I took it three Still. times. I got a 24, 21, and a 20. I got that score was my first one. You know what's you know what's really funny is one of my boys ended up sitting diagonal like behind me during the ACT, 
And after the test, he's like, dude, I straight up ripped your whole <laughs> fucking test. He got into flight school with a scholarship. He's oh, going to be a trained God. airline pilot next year. I'm like, dude, if you crash, I got like blood on my hands. Bro. Yeah, literally <laughs> blood on all your hands. Um, yeah, I got a 27, so shout out me. I'm the winner. What did you get? Oh, yeah. You just well, I, I don't know if I got a 24, and then that stupid bitch uh, teacher accused me of cheating. Maybe she, she's like, because your grades are all Cs and Ds. Why Why is your ACT? I, I will say maybe the test was harder back in your yeah, guys' day. She was accusing I don't know, like the 80s or whenever you guys were taking that. <laughs> way harder back in the was man. Uh, yeah. The late seventies when you took the ACT <laughs> and made it Oh, oh his shirt sure just says late seventies. It does say late seventies, doesn't it? <laughs> I think. All it's, right. I think. You look like you're ready to do whip it's at a Grateful Dead concert. I totally <laughs> miss the Dead. They were such, such a good band back then. <laughs> All right, let's finish it up. So we did. We we uh, are taking Cincy minus three and a half. <laughs> Is everyone taking? Well, he's buying. He's buying. He's buying. No, I'm still taking the minus. Mr. Three Asterisk over here. Johnny. I got Johnny all minus three and a half. Give me yeah. Joe Burr. I love Joe. Right, put, him in, put him in the friendly. Got Chase on the team. Bengals. All right, we're gonna do Bengals minus three. We'll, we'll keep that little point in. Hey, when's Watson back? Uh, well, Watson is Mr. Five points. He's, he's missing eleven weeks. Right? Missing eleven. But he's back week thirteen because they're on a week twelve bye. Right, which is so funny at the NFL. All right, so uh, before we let you guys go, that was our bets of the week. You guys will see the, the parlay online as well. We'll be posting on Twitter, Instagram, and everything like that. Uh, thank you very much, to Elliot, for coming out. Thank you for talking football. Thank you for talking Cowboys. We can't wait to have you on again. Meet them, boys. Uh, let people know where they can follow you. Obviously, Twitter, whatnot. Matt El Noriega, 28. Twitter, Instagram, you got me. If you love kids, you got me. Oh, shit. Like, not in a weird way. way. Not in a weird not way. way. Not in a Stu <laughs> fine, Finer way. But, yeah, so shout out. Not in a Stu Finer yeah, especially not that way. Um, all right. And also, shout out to White Boy Rick. Thank you for coming to the pod. Uh, it's been long overdue. We appreciate you coming. Yeah. And, Hopefully um, for some money. First of all, I appreciate absolutely. you guys yeah. having me on. It was yeah. a blast. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Out. Didn't know you live so close, and so now that we know, uh, hey, best in the business right here. Best I, I feel like a student of Padawan to the Jedi Masters over here, the Padawan <laughs> of the podcast. Game. Shout so, out the Padawan uh, Casino, right? That's what we call it, right? Nope, it's the Padawan. Hey, here we go, Padawan Casino. Yeah. It's Spotify Casino. Okay, uh, <laughs> so where can they find you? Everybody knows. You know, you know where to find me. You know where to find me. At White Boy. Uh, is it? What is it actually? They know. Yeah, they know. They know. Yeah, I know where to find you. You'll know. You'll uh, see it. Hey, if you're on Twitter, you already follow. And then also follow uh, the co-host at the Frisco Mike. Great guy. Not the greatest picks this offseason. This uh, oh six and one baby. Oh six and one. Make sure you when baseball season is around, up eighty one units. Hey, went six went six and zero oh in UFC this weekend too. So. And UFC. So hotter than habanero with my Raider sombrero. That's not Never leave the tip without the barrel in my apparel. The same bubble gum. Should we do the finale shot? Yeah. Yeah. Read my mind over Southern here. Southern Kelly, stay up up. Yeah, let's do one more shot and say yeah. goodbye to the listeners. This episode is brought to you by Bulldog Cartage. We'd like to thank you very much for letting us use the bar and the lounge. <laughs> Wait, toss me the hat. Toss me the hat. Got to wrap the brand. Toss the hat. Oh, that was a good this catch. FTB. Bulldog White Warriors boy Rick just went from White Boy Rick to Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. Uh, Shots. Wait, it was the flannel too. Yeah, I love it. Cheers, 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 cheers. Dude, cheers, did cheers. you really just cheers me? Yeah, cheers. Oh, yeah. cheers. cheers. All right. All right, guys. With that being said, pot. we will see you next week. We are going to have a very big one. Uh, it's going to be very juicy. So, see you guys next week. <laughs>